that night I won the Premier League, when I look at that throw, it was a shadow. Is it two times back to back world master? Well, a former Premier League champion. Let's welcome Jaza Glenn Durant. Yeah, we have an icon on the stage here at the Moda Super Series tonight. Sorry, Matt. Glenn Durrant makes his bow here at the Modus Super Series on the back of World Seniors Action in 2023. A very good evening and welcome to the Modus Super Series from the Live Lounge in Port. As I say, Matthew Edgar is alongside me. And look, the, all the headlines and all the hype tonight is going to be about Glenn Durrant. First time in this building at the Modus Super Series. That there's going to be a lot of eyes on him this evening. We saw signs at the World Seniors match play of him getting close to his best. What are we expecting to see from him over the next couple of days? I think a lot of that comes down to what you ask Glenn, what he expects that he's going to see over the next couple of days, and he doesn't know. If anything, I think he's expecting quite a negative experience here tonight. I've seen him, the weight of the world feels like on, is on his shoulders, and it's quite sad to see, really, when we look at it, and we see this is a guy that's won the Premier League, a guy at one point who was arguably the best player in the world during that Premier League campaign. Guy's won three Lakeside titles, and he just has so much pressure on his shoulders today. I think a lot of this is going to come down to how he kickstarts the action tonight, how that opening leg goes for him could really set the tone. But I'd love to see him come here and get some positive tonight we've seen him obviously commentate here a heck of a lot so he's used to this stage in that capacity could that actually help him because he's used to actually this environment even if he hasn't thrown darts here no, I, I think that's the total opposite in terms of this for Glenn. I'm going to speak from my own personal experience here because I feel like me and Glenn are very, very similar on very similar paths. We talk about the game and how we appear to it at the moment in exactly the same way. And when I came here six months ago and I took on a Group B campaign, I was exactly like Glenn was. I was more nervous than I've ever been in my life coming onto here. And it was only that first leg that settled me down, let the fire in the belly burn. And he needs that fire to burn so he thinks about everything rather than trying to just break down the issues that he's had over the last few years. Well, Glenn Dowd, former Premier League champion, it was announced early on this afternoon that Luke Little is going to be playing in that particular competition. He played here at the Moda Super Series last year and he's going to be playing some, in front of some of the biggest crowds in the world of darts in the Premier League. Now, he's actually one of 12 players who have played at the Super Series, either past or present, that would have played in the Premier League. Of course, Glenn Dowd, former champion. We had Fallon Sherrick and John Henderson as contenders. They both picked up draw in those respective campaigns. Mark Dubbish played in the inaugural Premier League. Annie Hounds and Kevin Painter in there as well. Of course, Robert Thornton is going to be here on Saturday night and he played in the Premier League for a couple of years as well. And for, for Luke, look, we know the headlines that he's harvested both in a sporting arena but also in a national arena. He's taken everything in its stride. But what do you think the challenges of the Premier League are going to be for him? I don't think there's a challenge in terms of what Luke Littler puts forward from other people. Luke Littler very much goes down that sort of philosophy of there is no opponent. It matters about what he is doing. He is so self-confident, self-assured. He's been doing this despite the fact he's 16. He's been playing this level for quite some time. And I think he's just going to take to that Premier League like duck to water. So that was Luke Littler's involvement in the Premier League. Let's get back to tonight's action then here at the Modus Super Series. It's Group B action for us to see in the midweight through our week. This is how the tournament breaks down. We saw Robert Thornton make it through to a record 10th final yesterday afternoon. And this afternoon we saw the beginning of Group C. But we'll talk about that in a second. Let's talk about Group B. Because joining Glenn Doan is Chris Lamman, Conan White from Group A, David Davis and Paul Hogan as well. Chris Lamman has gone in now from second favourite for the week to the favourite for the week. What's your opinion on that? Surprised, because he's not actually in the final yet. Normally, if you've got your Group A winner, you'd say, I expect that that player is going to be the favourite or so certainly short and massively in the odds. Robert Thornton is already in finals night. So for me, he's got to be the favourite because there's no guarantee Landman gets through this group. This is going to be a tough battle tonight. So, he's waiting for the week. Let's have a look at tonight's odds, because actually, it turns out to be Conan Whitehead, who's the winner for the group. Now, we know what he can do in short, sharp spells, and because of the way Group B is, is that why they may have put him at the favourite in terms of the betting? Well, we've also got to remember Conan Whitehead is a person, when you talk about 
potentially Glenn Durant coming on this stage and feeling at home. Conan Whitehead should be a man who feels very at home here because he's hoisted that giant novelty £20,000 cheque up into the air and he's had the ultimate winning experience on this stage. And whenever you walk onto a stage where you've had positive vibes and experiences before, you can get all those come flooding back very quickly. We saw some very good signs from him in his Group A campaign. I wouldn't be surprised here to see Conan Whitehead put in a performance, but I do think the odds are just a little bit skinny in a group like this so that is uh, the outright betting then for this evening so we'll move from that and we'll have a little look at the bet builder for tonight this is what you've been betting on at home and you've been betting on in your droves it's been a busy couple of days hasn't it in the darts markets and in general what kind of group are you expecting that's the bet builder on screen there i'm expecting a, a tightly contested group but there's obviously a lot of support here for Glenn Durant tonight. We know he's a very popular player. He's been around the game for a long time. And the even money shot there taken against David Davies. I'm sure when Glenn looked at this group, that was the game he was probably eyeing up and thinking, I need to get a result there. Probably not the best thing that it's come in the opening fixture for Glenn. I think it may take him a little bit of time to settle from what we've seen so far throughout his sort of demeanour, shall we say, today. But... If he's going to win one, I'd say that would be the one he's got to eyeball. Well, we'll see Glenn Dunn in game three against David Davis. He's going to kickstart the night. He takes on Conan Whitehead in the first of our evenings, in our evenings matches. Conan, former champion, of course, here back in Series 1. And early on this evening, Chris Murphy caught up with him. Yeah, his thoughts ahead of tonight. Conan, back in uh, Group B. First of all, there was a chance that you might actually get straight through to finals night, the last match yesterday between Robert and Colin. Um, just tell us about your, your emotions as they were playing that. Well, I did, to be honest, I didn't know what the result had to be until someone told me. And then when someone told me, I watched it vividly, like, come back in the room, watched it. And, uh, yeah, I was cheering on Colin, to be fair. And when he went 3-2 up, I thought, right, I've got this, and he missed. And then uh, Robert took out a 1-1-2. One, one, and knocked me out, and I was, I was gutted. Mm. But no, don't get me wrong, I love playing in the night session, so I'm back here tonight playing. Aside from that, you won all of your matches, so you must come in in some confidence. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you, you've watched me before. I'm a slow starter, but now I'm now I'm back in the swing of it. I'll be dangerous tonight, I think. And I hear you made a bit of a trip to play another match uh, yesterday. <laughs> what happened there? Well, I couldn't let the lads down. I mean, it was, it was a local Super League game, and uh, my boy... He's a captain of our side, and we was a bit short last night, so I stepped back and uh, I said to the missus, drive us, drive us back to Swanley. It's about 90 miles, so we made the trip. I ended up winning with someone else's darts, to be honest, because I forgot mine, I left them here. But I ended up winning four... Uh, four... Well, the result doesn't matter, but I won the game and helped the team out. So the winning streak continued last night. Um, you expect it to continue tonight as well? It's a, a decent group? I hope so. I mean... I'm a little bit more nervous tonight because there's uh, a certain person in that room I've never beaten. I'm not going to mention no names, but we'll see you later. And then tomorrow, hopefully, I'm doing another interview and I'm going to tell you I've beaten him now. <laughs> and, of course, you are kind of part of the furniture here at the Super Series, won the first ever series. A lot of the talk's recently been about Luke Littley. You know he's not going to be here. Have you got ambitions now to match that and surpass the Super Series wins that he's had? No, not really. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I know I'm good enough to win it again, so... We'll just, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. I mean, Luke's done fantastic. You can't argue with that. But, yeah, I'll just come and do what I'm doing. We look forward to watching it. Good Brilliant, thank tonight. you. Magnificent arena here at the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth. It's a stage that Conan Whitehead knows all too well. The first ever winner under the roof here at the Modus Super Series back in October 2022. It was around about this time last year that David Davies made his debut in this particular competition. The Welshman, who has been a regular ever since, is hoping to make it back through to a Saturday night final. The last time he was here, he was involved in a belt match. He lost out to Chris Hurds on that particular occasion. But for Whitehead, he's looking to we kindled the glories of October last year. David's looking to win his first week here at the Super Series. And in the commentary box for tonight's action, it's a very good evening to Chris Murphy, who's alongside Matthew Edgar. Good evening, Henry. Good evening, everybody. Yep, it is a modus Super Series game that you would expect to see many times. Both players have been regular fixtures here. David Davis, the Welshman, has seemed to get better, actually, every time he's appeared on that stage and looks very, very comfortable on it these days. We've seen him at finals night before. Conan White, of course, we've seen in the grand final before winning 
the grand final. Uh, Conan, of course, the man in your picture right now, the Series 1 champion, and his opening match against Davis. He mentioned in his interview, he didn't want to say the name, but he's nervous about playing Glenn Durant, so he'd like to get this one out of the way before he does take on Duzza in the very last match of the night. Now, I know, Matthew Edgar, you're someone who sort of subscribes to the, the mental side of the game, the psychological leg, side of David things. First first. Spoke Game with on. Henry in depth about Durant's mindset. If White is nervous about playing him, but he's not playing him until the end of the night, that could be something that could potentially be a distraction, couldn't it? I think the whole field will be nervous about playing Glenn, to be honest, on the back of what he's done in the past. And there'll be scores that would need to be settled for certain players. Players don't forget. 60. I certainly have never forgiven Robert Thornton for what happened in 2013. 11 years ago now, when it's still a bitter pill to swallow. So you can imagine someone like Paul Hogan, who had matched darts to beat Glenn Durant and nearly stopped this whole Glenn Durant story from happening. Yeah, and some story it is. And that's the, the beautiful thing about the game of darts. I know there are many new 16. eyes and ears on this sport right now because of a certain 16-year-old. But the Durant story was the, the total opposite of that, wasn't it? A, a guy who sort of played darts at a, an okay level but worked full-time and had his success 137. in his 40s. Hard work, graft and determination got Glenn Durant over the line. 100. We've seen that in the Super Series champions as well. Of course, Little are winning twice, but Conan Whitehead's victory in Series 1 in 2022, that was his greatest starting day. It was interesting. He does speak 95. with confidence. He feels like this is his manner and said that he thinks he's good enough to win it again, but is he going to be good enough to win this first leg? At the moment, it's looking like the Welshman. 140. But the leg now David's has gone beyond the fact of his Conan good enough, and it's now the fact of will David Davies let him have a shot? Because there's nothing Conan can do here but to stand and hope. Game shot on the first leg. The only David hope he's Davies. got now is no hope. David Davies holds on to his throw in the opening leg. Now, there is something else that came up in that interview that I just really Second want leg, to, it's Conan to throw first. put a bit of light on, Game really. On. And that is sort of the, the camaraderie that comes from this sport. Yes, there's been a lot of new eyes and ears on the sport as we look at the grandeur of the sport. We've looked at the biggest stages. We're looking at the prize money. We're looking at the opportunities that the sport presents. But we can't forget where the sport originates from and the origins. And that sort of team environment that made Conan Whitehead think it was a good idea to do a 180-mile round trip just to support his fellow teammates on a Wednesday 121. night trying to get himself through to a Champions Week for another £20,000. Yeah, it's an interesting play. I suppose if he goes and does what he did yesterday and wins all his matches, then he'll say, what a wise thing I did. But if 40. he does the opposite and plays like he did on Tuesday and won just one of his five matches, he... Lost four. We'll be hoping to avoid doing that tonight. And that is exactly 140. what he did when he was in Group B on the last Champions Week. Lost all of his matches on the Thursday and it proved to be unassailable. Well, the good news is, like he said in the interview, he won that game 4-0. 1, 3, 2. Result doesn't 85. matter. Draw. Conan, you require 170. All about the win. Looking for a dozen data here. Treble 19 would help him get there, but he can't manage that. But he does know. He's got all the time in the world with David Davis pretty much halfway through this leg. 59. Two legs of very similar style of play, completely dominated by the player on throw, which is what you'd expect when players are playing at the peak of the powers and they're playing on Conan song. But 58. The issue of Conan Whitehead is he's got to try and find a break of throw somewhere. Yeah, so on a second leg, Conan Whitehead. Just getting level and trying to capitalise maybe on that off leg. Third leg, it's Davis. David to throw first. A good time to break. Davis Game on. could have a hangover here. He needs to reset, refocus. Wasn't even on a finish when Conan Whitehead went out in 15 darts. And maybe we're seeing signs of that with that first dart here. Suddenly, something that felt so easy a leg ago 40. now seems very difficult.
that just engages 56. the brain. You just start thinking of things like that, trying to work out what went well in that first leg. And then you try and tend to find you play the whole leg, trying to replicate something or replicate a feeling rather than just letting 45. it come naturally. You'll grip the dart slightly different. You'll hold it slightly different. You'll stand at the hockey slightly different. Then you'll hit a turn. You'll go, oh, there it is. I need to do that. Next row, it doesn't work. And you spend the entire leg and match just getting into that battle and that fight with yourself. We have a pretty solid style, David Davis. I said, I'll tell you what, just looking 100. at his expression. We love this split screen set up in darts where you see the action and the emotion at the same time. And I felt he was kind of looking confused every time he didn't find the treble there. 60. Often the, 125. the players that are the most consistent are the ones that don't give you a flicker when when they're throwing. Luke Humphrey's the world champion. One of those himself, isn't he? So much more fun, though, isn't it? Watching a player who shows you every single darts and motion. Bouncing around the stage. 58. We won't see that require 120. self-proclaimed boring, boring dozer tonight. We won't see a 120 checkout from Conan Whitehead 60. in that busy. David, you require 100. But he has put himself in that position to break. And David Davis, if he's going to stop that, he's going to have to produce something seismic. It won't happen. So the only saving grace, Matthew, is that 60 is not the ideal checkout Conan, you for Whitehead. require 60. For that reason, the dart standing up, he's had to move across to open Shot up the bed, but leg. that was not Conan a problem Whitehead. for Conan Whitehead. And he gets that breaker throw that he's going to need at some point in this game. Four flag, it's Conan to throw first. Game on. One hundred and forty. Let's have a bit of swagger, doesn't he? Conan Whitehead when he walks around the stage. Yeah, I think he's found something here, having won 81. that first series. Uh, you can see him sometimes on a pro tour and maybe doesn't hold that same kind of aura that he has at the Super Series, having been the first champion. He really does treat it like his 95. stage. Fifty-seven. He's trying to impose himself on this game. If you look at the little stage tells and stage presence, he's straight to the hockey. Ninety-six. Almost telling David Davies, get out of the way, pal. I want to get on. He walks literally on the very borderline of the exclusion zone. One seventy is on offer. Conan Whitehead would have. No Conan, need you require to 170. net the fish should he get the opportunity, and he won't get the opportunity. I think he wanted to have a go at it because he was unhappy with not finding that treble 20. 96. We know he likes the bulls, though. We've seen him go 13 and bull so far this week, so we know he wouldn't have been turning it down. 74 when Conan comes back for a 3 1 Conan, advantage in a race 74. to four legs. Now 20 and tops. He executed this in two darts to win the previous leg. 34. That one's over the top. David Davis, though, not on a finish. Same again there. He had to move across the hockey there to try and open up the bed. And we've seen people, Daryl Gurney, Luke Littler throw a flat dart, Andy Hamilton throw under the treble 20. 130. Maybe be something that Conan Whitehead 40. might incorporate into his game as we a move flag. forward. Conan because Whitehead. certainly when that bed's open up, he's got no issue in hitting it. Fifth leg, it's David to throw Dimitri first. Vandenberg, we've seen go for trouble game 12 on. in that spot as well. David Davis needs to find something here, something like that, more like that. 140. Need to get that break back, but he only needs to do it once, having had the throw start of this match. 
100 and For the first time in Group B, Jack Garwood, our referee, gets to call out the maximum visit. And Whitehead, the first man to tick the box. And it's great response 58. after the double treble visit from David Davies just to say you might be throwing first, pal. And I'm the bigger scorer. 94. Looking for another treble. At least one. Not that one. 126. One hundred and thirty seven. Closing in on the win. Davis trying to apply some pressure, but it's hit and hope now. One hundred and thirty seven. There hasn't been a lot of hope when Cody White approaches the hockey in this game. Average just shy of a ton. It's gonna be a dart at his favourite double, the bullseye. Sixty five. David you require forty. A reprieve. For the Denby Darts player. Game shot on a fifth Gets leg. David Davy. In the top corner of the double to keep the game going. Every leg can count. Sixth in these leg. Groups. It's Conan to the throw first. Particularly Group B where game three off. players go through from five. Even if you don't have a, a positive return in your results, you can get through in that third place. Often it comes down to leg difference. 85. Mentioned he came from Denby. We saw the long list of players who've played in the Premier League and the Super Series. You discussed with Henry Matthew at the 81. top of the show. Another one you could add is Mark Webster, who hasn't played at the Super Series, but did play in the previous guys of this competition, the Live League in Southampton. 140. Bond of the Super Series here, David Davies, and I say that because earlier on he was taking part in his bullseye challenge and introduced himself as Davies, David Davies. He'll be hoping to have some sort of heroic turnaround here in this one. 44. No spoilers, though, in how Davies, David Davies got on in the bullseye challenge after... Wait for the action to be uploaded. Yep, do keep an eye out on our Photoship Series YouTube channel and across all of our social media platforms. Are you following and subscribing? 100. David, you require 100. You mentioned that David Davis, that's Davis, David Davis, would need a break a throw back to take back control, and you might get it here. Because that on sixth leg, is an 11 David dart Davies. leg. Absolutely brilliant. Conan Whitehead claps his hands in response, respecting the Seven magnificence the final leg. It's of that David leg of darts. To throw first. You mentioned at the start of this game that you feel that David Davies has got better every time he comes game here. On. And for whatever reason, however it seems to break down, I tend to find that I'm on commentary every time he comes here. That is something that has developed into David Davies' game. At 3-1 down before, he just rolled over and waited for the next fixture. Not now. He digs deep, he fights, and he's bringing that average up towards that 100 barrier as well. This is a quality tussle. 80. Well, that one is not touching the board by a distance. If that dart had dangled and just rested on a scoring segment, he would have got the points. He might need the points here, because David Davies is hitting him hard. 137. Yeah, he really has caught light. The average of Davis is up at almost 100. The demeanour of Whitehead changed there. It was a bit more laissez-faire. It was almost like a half a smile across his face as if to say, why does this always happen to me? He's becoming, mentality-wise, that unlucky player. 92. Yeah, it's been a... A really good darting ding dong between this pair, but it looks like Davis is going to land the heavy blows. 81 at the end of the match. David, you require 147. Well, he's got time to make sure he can have a couple of swings at it. 
No trouble visit here would really 24. pique the interest of Cohen and Whitehead. We know he can fill it up, and he might need to right here. One hundred and forty. Well, this David is still in the balance. Nineteens is the first target. Treble, he wanted at least a single. A single nineteen would have left him on a finish. He scored two points more there and wasn't on a checker. All he can do is set 91. up. Ninety-one. Don't hope require that Whitehead 140. doesn't take out one hundred and forty. Fifty-two. David, you require 32. Well, he couldn't take it out. David Davis has done well to dig deep and turn this match around. Can he complete the comeback mission? Double four. Game shot. And he and does match. in the David end. Davies. Last start, and it always hurts that little bit more. But Conan White said can't do anything other than congratulate that fight back from David Davis, who looked like he'd lost it when he found himself 3-1 behind, but then reeled off a hat-trick of straight legs to get the victory there. Sparked by that 100 checkout for an 11 dart turnaround leg, 50% on the doubles, a pair of them, and a really good start to this evening's action, which will continue after the break with Paul Hogan taking on Chris Lambman. Well, Davies, David Davies, was shaken, but he wasn't to be stirred, was he? As he sells the comeback victory against Conan Whitehead by four legs of free to kickstart our night. Next up, that man on your screen, Paul Hogan, is going to make the record as the second most capped player in the history of the Motor Super Series, making his eighth appearance tonight at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. He takes on Chris Lamman, who the bookies for the week outright has as a favourite to go on and take the five grand jackpot. Well, these two regulars at the lakeside, Dan in the commentary box, is a man who's hoping to win Lakeside next year. Glenn Dowd's playing the next match, so it's Matthew Edgar in comms alongside Chris Murphy. Yeah, I'll have to qualify first, Henry. I'll be, I'll be practising. Paul Hogan 
Well, he could have stopped Glenn Durant at that lakeside, couldn't he? Three times a quarter finalist, a 60 year old, of course, made it all the way through to a big match, a big final at the seniors. A semi final, was it? They lost out first to Leonard leg, Gates. Yeah, semi final. First. Chris Landman made it to the final at the lakeside, as Henry just alluded to. And that's where your starting journey for 2024. 100. We're hoping it'll end, isn't it? Like. Have to reword that and just say, "Starting journey." To take out the 2024 part. So heard, it, heard all this before. Certainly in a playing capacity, anyway. All right, Raymond. Yeah, just 100. want the big gala, don't I? Or at least a buffet. Yeah, well, been some great memories. Actually, 60. the reason that Paul Hogan Senior semi-final stuck in my head. Probably even more than the final. Apologies to Jim McEwen, who it was who made it to the final in York, is because Leonard Gates actually left the stage after that semi final without shaking Paul Hogan's 100. hand. 100. Hogan didn't really understand it, but the problem was that when he got back 60. into the practice room and sort of asked Leonard Gates, Why did you not shake my hand? What's happened? That's disrespectful. Said, what, what are you talking about? He said, Why didn't you shake my hand after the match? And Leonard Gates said, Well, as it finished, I thought it was going to be a break. <laughs> Well, we know his counting's not the best. He probably thought he was leg three. 100. It's good to see him. Of course, he'll be going 96. for that Seniors World title. Hogan will hope to be there. Robert Thornton looking to defend it. That's all around the corner as well. Well, he thought that was in. Get back. Double nine instead. 87. Now he's left himself in a, a little bit of trouble, but Landman can't do anything about it right now. 100. Pull you require Down nine. Down the local, the lads would have been sat with their fishing rods trying to reel him back. No oh, they'll be throwing him back Chris in. You require 86. Well, the crocodile rocked. And Landman looking to punish, looking to bite on the bullseye. Game oh, on the that has leg. got Chris to Landman. hurt Paul Hogan. He thought he'd won the leg just 30 seconds ago. When he Second thought leg, the dart had hit the double 18, first. then missed the double Game 9 on. by a margin, and then missed the big number. Criminal and punished. The handcuffs on him. 55. As Landman hit the ball. Chris Landman didn't make any attempt to look at Paul Hogan there. Well, I'm a little bit sadistic. Like I'd like to have watched the misery. 97. I'd like to have watched him shaking his head and beating himself up at the back of the stage. I'd have enjoyed it. I'd, I probably wouldn't even be throwing darts right now. I'd probably still be watching. See how Hogan can recover. Those moments can take a while to recover from at 60. times. And this is only a race to four legs. Fifty-nine. One hundred and forty. One hundred. Was beaten heavily in that Lakeside final by Andy Barton, who was another excellent addition to the Super Series last year. I think we'll be lucky to see him again this year. One hundred. You get two card. Chris, you require one hundred and forty. It'll be in my list of ten players. Well, it'll kind of be a list of nine players. Now I've just gave one of them away, but. 131. Certainly going to be on my short list. 104. I think he'll do well if he does get one as well. Well, it's a big number miss, but this time it's recoverable. Treble 17 would leave Paul Hogan a shot of the bull himself, and how sweet that would be. That would just 40. Chris, you require render it 16. irrelevant, wouldn't it? Getting back on track mentally and in the match, but he couldn't get a go at it. Eight. We'll get a go at taking Paul out the 64. 64. Everything just slightly off, isn't it? That was miles away from the three. 32. Chris, you require eight. The important bit, though. Missed again. And Lambert. on his second leg. Lambert's Chris Lambert. Paul Hogan, none from three, but that stat itself is misleading because he should have had more. He's effectively none Third from leg, five. Third leg, it's Paul to throw first. Game on.
Remember the last time Paul Hogan was here, he was playing some of the darts of his life. He actually started practicing. So he's talking about 97. It's an old jog, new tricks. I think we'd see quite good things from Paul Hogan, who probably spent his entire Christmas going to 100. every single darting open in the local area. He'll often be found walking out of a local working men's club with a pocket full of cash around Christmas time. One hundred and eighty. That will make him feel a little bit better. Forty-four. But then follows up by missing a big number. Forty. Only forty landmen may light up here. One hundred. Got a better finish than Hogan. Suddenly, this leg might be turning in Chris Landman's favour. Well, it's kind of a replica of the opening leg where Paul Hogan had the throw where it looked like Paul Hogan was going to win it all the way up until the very end. Landman not going to pick his pocket. Unable to stay straight. So Hogan... 42. Paulie require 40. Just to get his first leg on the board. Game shot on the third leg. Paul Hogan. So... Half the deficit, but no. Fourth Hogan. leg, it's Chris to throw first. Throw. Well, Paul, stay where Game you are, on. mate. Totally unsettled at the moment, Paul Hogan, despite winning that leg. He doesn't seem to know where he is. One hundred and forty. We know where he is there. He's back in the treble 20. He does need 100. to find the break of throw against Landman, who is a guy who should be brimming with confidence. That Lakeside final we speak about was literally just a month ago. 100. What that means is it means he needs to tighten his belt because the pocket full of cash might be pulling the trousers down. £20,000 picking up for that one. But he's left himself on a bogey here, so opportunity for Hogan to 100. step in. One hundred. Landman was fifty-nine. Better off. Paul, you require one hundred and sixty-one. Paul Hogan after nine darts, but Hogan's on a finish. Landman wasn't. That is a finish he could take out. Treble seventeen. Close, but not close enough. One hundred and thirty-seven. Chris, you require one hundred. 80. He's looking for both of those darts to go in 24. double top. Paul Hogan's looking for one of his darts to go in double 12. That's not where he wanted it. Again, he's cost himself a dart a double here. Missing not just the double, but the single as well. Only just put that in the seven. Game shot on well, the fourth leg. Paul will Hogan. Feel like the scruffiest of visits to win a leg, but Hogan won't care. The way in which Fifth it happened, though, and Chris Langman was stood at the back of the stage doing something I like to call meerkatting when you're sort of peering over the shoulder of the player. You'll feel that in the same sort of similar situation, he may get another opportunity. Sixty. Reminder, Glenn Durant making his Modus Super Series debut in the match that follows this. He's going to take on David Davis in his opener. 140. David Davies already had a game as well, a successful game of 4 3 win over Conan Whitehead 60. in our opening fixture of the day, which, if you subscribe to the John Park theory, would actually make David Davies quite the favourite in that one, who's already had successful vibes. 41. Not positive vibes coming from Paul Hogan tonight. Really in a battle with himself. 100. One hundred and forty. Once again, leaves a double after twelve. 
It wasn't positive 100. at the start, but it's certainly becoming that Warning way now for Paul 40. Hogan. Just doesn't want to see this hit the one or the five. Game shot on Daddy the fifth wants leg. to see it going Paul sweet Hogan. as a nut into the treble. The double, sorry. Sixth leg, it's Chris to throw first. That's game on. Game. Was perfectly pitched, that one. 57. One hundred. One hundred. One hundred. This is the experience coming to show here of Paul Hogan. So no matter what happens in leg one and 57. two, it's a seven leg match potentially. You look forward, not backwards. Eighty nine. Game has been all about Paul, really, when he struggled these long legs and when he managed to perform, he's won them. Chris Lamond carried on doing the same thing throughout the game. And that's the exact same sort of 100. level that he's been playing on. Throughout Tuesday and Wednesday in his Group A campaign. 83. So, Paulie require 112. In his opening match tonight, and he's going to get a go. At double 16. Game and shot. that's and the, the way to win it. Paul, Paul Hogan. But well, he turned that around, losing first couple of legs in that one he was really struggling on the doubles leaving doubles missing big numbers busting his score but he managed to gather himself and in the end produce a pretty decent performance 93.63 the average landing 50 percent of the doubles that he did get to and capping off an opening victory with 112 checkout now don't go anywhere because after the break the other player to have won so far tonight david davis is going to take on a debutant at the super series in a form of the former Premier League champion and three-time Lakeside World Champion, Glenn Durant.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Paul Hogan was made to work for it in the end. A 4-2 victory against Chris Lamb and 2-0 down before then reeling off four legs in succession to get the better of the Lakeside WDF World Finalists back in December. Talking about players successful at the Lakeside, it is a Super Series bow for Glenn Doan. Does it takes to the stage here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth for the first time tonight. His first assignment is David Davis already has a win under his belt against the former champion here in Conan White. But before we get the action underway, we caught up with Glenn Doan earlier on this evening, former Premier League winner himself. He caught up with Chris Murphy. Glenn, I was going to say welcome to the Super Series. You've been here before, but not in this capacity. How are you feeling tonight? Uh, yeah, it's, it's just a, probably an hour before we play now. So the normal nerves for a dark player. I was incredibly nervous even when I was playing regular as well. So it's uh, Probably a bad time to ask, um, but yeah, I mean the guys uh, are really, you know, chipper next door. They're they're all pretty cheerful and trying to help me relax. But yeah, nerves are there. I know there has been some attention on on you being here tonight from the other players as well. A couple have mentioned that they've never beaten you before yeah. and, and things like that. Have you felt that in the practice room that they're actually nervous around you? Only Conan Whitehead who said he's like um, his real bogey player and honestly Chris I can only remember beating him once in a final of the England Open in Celsius but he then reeled off a few others there but uh, Paul Hogan walked in seven years I've been waiting for this tonight so the targets on my back there I just hope a little bit of fighting spirit comes in the belly when I get on here. Uh, preparation for this obviously you were commentating at the the world championship so you've seen a lot of good darts but have you had the chance to throw many no no absolutely not i come in here pretty right an hour uh, a couple of days ago an hour yesterday um at times they go absolutely fantastically well it's just when you say game on you may see tonight the the brilliance uh, you may see what's blighted me over the years and just give us your thoughts on on what we saw last night that epic world championship final and and what that's done for the sport of darts. Yeah, listen, honestly, I drove down here, which is normally a five hour journey. And, you know, every radio station, every TV station uh, stopped me. It took me a long time to get to Portsmouth today. The interest has gone very much like Fallon Sherrick in 2019. It's been, it's been fantastic for the game. A very mature 16 year old player. And, uh, you know, for the sport of darts, he, he's been absolutely fantastic. But. I hope he keeps his feet on the ground. You know, health and well-being is really important to me now. The family, the management, they've got to look after him. They've got to nurture him, uh, but it was pretty special. And he's a 16-year-old player who said that he just wanted to win one match. It was a good little plan for him. What are your ambitions tonight? Honestly, I mean, there's a wry smile on my face as I answer there. I'd love to be competitive. I think uh, the bet builder tonight was uh, Glenn Durant lose 4-0 all four games. But uh, um, I, like I said, I'm a little nervous. This part of me is thinking if someone hits me hard earlier, will just the uh, instinct come out of me? You've got to remember when I play a dart now, I'm overthinking an awful lot. So it's a very, very difficult game for me now. But I've had exhibitions where I've been taking a bit of a battering and then all of a sudden, I just then throw darts because I'm not thinking. I'd love for that to happen. I'm here to get some legs in the bank for the seniors. I've tried to pull out uh, the past two or three weeks. You wouldn't know that, you know, should I message Morris and say, I can't do this. But I've ran away from darts a little bit too often. If I could enjoy it and be competitive, that would be a success. Well, we're glad to have you here and we'll enjoy watching it. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you. Well, here he is then. He has decided to face his darting demons and play through to fight. And that is something he's shown a lot throughout his career, a glittering career that saw him win three Lakeside World Championships and that illustrious Premier League crown just four seasons ago. Now, slinging his stuff in the seniors, a 53-year-old, he takes on the Denby darts player, David Davis, who did win his first match of the night, 4-3 against Conan Whitehead, but Glenn Durant, I'm sure a player that many of you have tuned in to see, wondering if Duzza can do what Duzza used to be able to do. And there's the added element, of course, that maybe since last time that he really played, made a bit of a comeback to playing at last year's Seniors World Championship. I know he did play in the, the match play in York as well. He's become a, 
a prominent commentator in the sport, Glenn Duran, and you've sat in the commentary box here, Matt, and first then leg, had to play on the Glenn stage. That brings first. its own challenges as well. Game on! 100%. It can become very easy to get embroiled with all the stories, and the stories that Glenn will be telling himself. He's already told us one of the stories. He's become a bit of an overthinker with the game. He'll be analysing everything. 96. And I do think that the first nine darts here will really set the tone for what is to come here for Glenn Durant across this campaign. David Davis will not be an easy opponent for him. It would be an honour for him to be playing Glenn Durant and he's hit him with the 180 straight away. He is a, an ace analyst of the sport, particularly about the throwing style. And he's spoken about his own throw, how it's kind of not the same as it used to be. But the darts are still landing in pretty handy spots for him so far in this match anyway. You said the first nine darts could be key. If he plays this right, he could be on a finish after nine 45. darts. And that'll just stoke up the fire in the belly. And then that takes over. When that fire starts burning in the belly, you don't start thinking about the throw and the action. All of that goes to side and you just start staring and thinking about the trebles and 61. the more you hit those trebles, the more you start thinking about wins and points. The issue he's got in the throw and we'll probably see it on his next visit is it just that pullback isn't as pronounced as it used to be. It's 2 is against him. But Glenn Durant, just have a look here. He's Throws set, and then he just kind of pushes it forward rather than bringing it back a little like he used to do. Still found the treble. And another. Well, maybe it's not a four in the throw. Maybe it's David an adaptation 96. in the throw. Maybe that's the way he needs to look at it. Throws evolve and change over time, absolutely. We could get Glenn Durant 2.0. This is a solid leg here from Dozer, and he's going to get an opportunity to 56. hold on to his throw. 64 Glenn, left after just 64. 12 darts. And in a leg in which his opponents hit two 180s. 16. Leaves Glenn Durrant on tops. 24. Oh, just clips the wire. David, you require Little 40. grimace from Glenn. Davis has earned this chance, let's be fair, with those two maxis. Next on the first leg, David Davies. Well, there should be no negativity here from Dozer. That was a mighty fine effort. Second leg, it's Davis to throw first. You do feel the story's going to be about Glenn Durant quite Game a lot on. tonight in these games, but it isn't a Glenn Durant tribute show tonight. That was a mighty fine effort there from David Davis to break the throat. 13 data. 100. Looking to follow up the success of that opening game. It was a 4-3 win over... Conan Whitehead for David Davies, averaging 95.13. 39. I did mention at the very start that you feel David Davies is getting better every time he comes here. This is the best David Davies I have seen so far. He's had a couple of rough finals nights. He's very adept at making it there. 81. And again, one of those players who first appeared as a, an ADC qualifier and then impressed enough to be invited back. So if you are watching, having just got into darts, or maybe done what Glenn Durant's done and worked all your life and played darts as a bit of a, a side hustle, and maybe get to one of those ADC tournaments. You never know where it could lead. You could be on this stage. Luke Littler's first appearance here was as an ADC qualifier. 125. Get some good stories in darts like that, don't you? Remember the Rob Cross going to the amateur qualifiers at the UK Open, then winning the World Championship? 40. Well, this isn't the same kind of leg from Glenn as he got in the first, and maybe the brilliance of David Davis has just knocked him a little bit. Can't take anything away from this display from Davis. 61. He has been showing some positive signs, Glenn Durant, in some of the exhibitions that he's been playing. He's been travelling around with Phil Taylor, taking part in exhibition events. 39. He actually won an exhibition event David not too long ago. Beating Scott Mitchell in the final. 
Also beating Kevin Painter along the way. Oh, this is brilliant. Double 16 for a three-figure out. 118. Determined to make the story about him, isn't he? Eighty. David, you require sixteen. Well, not just misfiring, but miscounting there, David Glenn Durham. Third leg. It's Glenn to throw first. Game on. Didn't leave a finish with his last start. Wouldn't have mattered anyway as Davis went out, and he's two 0 to the good. There will be a large following of people. Tuning in to watch Glenn Durant tonight. Very, very popular player. Very big on his 45. social media and his interactions. Speaking of social media, if you are watching us on the Super Series YouTube channel, do please subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the more quality content 43. we can bring you. Amazingly, 69% of those watching on YouTube right now are not subscribed. It would do us enormous amount of good and it would do you good as well because you make sure that you get all of the good stuff first 60 david davis is producing the good stuff first in this match starting to get a little bit concerned now for glenn durant in terms of what we're seeing in the body language we know full well 95 oh hello that was an interesting dart there from david davis it touching the face of the board so it's going to count 95 points but we know the darts can turn around in terms of where they're landing. And Glenn Durant staring down his first maximum of this campaign. Just doesn't want to see a two or three treble turn from David Davis here. He needs that little bit of a buffer, you feel. 60. And he's got it at the moment in this leg. You need that bit of breathing room sometimes. When you're in a game like this and you're going in it and you're feeling under pressure, the pressure that you're applying on yourself, you sometimes think, just give me a bit of breathing room. Have a trebleless visit. Follow it up with a 41. Just let me have a couple of throws 60. up here and have a bit of comfort on the scoring, which he's got at the moment. That he wanted to be competitive, Glenn Durant. A 4 0 defeat is the worst thing that could happen. 33. Not just in terms of his result, his leg difference, but his mindset as well for the rest of the night. Davis has left a finish. Now, we could see here Glenn Durant get his first leg in the ledger. 100. We could see it snatched David away from him in the most spectacularly cruel fashion. And it's on. Another one in there. Would have left in the bullseye. Durant can breathe a sigh of relief, but now... 98. He's at the pressure point. Glenn, you require Has Mr. 96. Dart already at tops to take a leg in this match? Needs to find a treble. Going double-double. It was two double 19s a target. 40. Was David the option of maybe 72. using treble 16 rather than going for a block bed? Well, that makes it a little bit more awkward for David Davies. 63. Might be a dart at the ball. It's not even going to be that. He's pulled that one low. And for a man who looked like he could do no wrong, can't do no right on this shot. Glenn Durant 32. should be getting another opportunity here Glenn to require get his first leg on the board here at the Moda Super Series. 16 for tops. Forty six. David, you require forty. Anguish for the former king of darts. David Davis looking to punish, clean up his own mess. Now he just seems to be suffering a little 30. bit of tension. Glenn, you require Durant 10. returns. He doesn't care how he throws it. He doesn't care how it goes in. He just hopes it does go in. Chooses double one. No score. But it's not the one. David, you require 10. Quite like the way he just got straight up to the hockey there. Came with purpose and height. 
Here we go. He's going to try the same equation. Double one. No score. I think same hole, isn't it? Same. Glenn, you require. That was ten. David Davis. That wasn't a replay, guys. It all builds tension. Misters sometimes make matches, you know. And there's real darting drama here. Now Durant doesn't get Six. the full quota of darts, and David, David Davis gets another ten. go. Flyer. Often you can over adjust after a dart like that. Well, just doesn't adjust at all. Five. I think they were safe darts there when you to begin with. Four. It was sort of the one at one in philosophy there from David Davies. Game shot on the third leg. Glenn Durrant. And there it is. Glenn Durrant. Gets his first leg here at the Moda Super Series. Fourth leg, it's David it to throw first. Without drama. Game on. And normally on this situation, you'd say, I don't think he minds as long as he's winning, but you could see the worry written all across the face of Glenn Durrant. He hasn't had too much time to practice and prepare for this event. He was commentating over the festive period on the PDC World Championships. Something he wasn't expecting until just a couple of weeks before. One hundred. Well, what a difference a dart makes. Durant finding a double and then suddenly finding trebles. 83. And I'm sure his friends and supporters will be tucking into their palmos right now, getting excited at the prospect of a fight back here from Glenn Durant because the first start is starting to go well. 137. Yeah, good stuff this from Glenn Durant. We did see it like this in the first leg, so maybe just getting over the line in a leg has reset, cleared the mind. 57. He did say that one of the things he was hoping to do was not to think too much, just to play on a bit of instinct. That only happens when you get embroiled into a match. When the mind can concentrate on something other than the action. And that's what he's doing now. He's 99. focusing on the game. He's focusing on the activity, which is just purely hit the target. Think about that side of the hockey rather than the technical side. 24. Glenn, you require 130. He's got time on his hands here. Completely outscored David Davies in this one. A wild wide one from Glenn Durant, but he's got time to work his way down here. 72. Last dart ensures he'll get a couple of darts at double when he returns. To square up this match, a match after a couple of legs, David Davis was flying, absolutely flying. Durant wasn't really in it. 56. The Glenn demeanor of Glenn all of a sudden is looking a lot more positive. The shoulders are starting to come back. The chest is starting to stick out. Taking some big inhales of oxygen, really inflating that chest. Leg, and that is a 14 dart breaker throw from Glenn Durant. Well, he got himself a reputation for Fifth being leg, a real fighter, didn't he? First. Game on. Glenn Durant. And I think when you've got that reputation, when you get in a fight, you start to think this is, this is my territory. Glenn Durant right now is one of the hardest 100. players on the world to play, certainly on this Super Series stage, because for David Davies, he would have been playing Glenn. And while you're doing that, the whole way through, you're just thinking 100. at any moment, he could turn back into the old Glenn Durant. And you're almost playing with that little bit of fear, a little bit of expectancy. They were just seeing that that little difference in his throw. It's more of a push than one hundred and eight. Swing back and follow through, but the darts landing exactly where he wanted them. All three in the treble twenty. A first one hundred and eighty for Glenn Durant in the Moda Super Series. One hundred. Well, at the moment, he's looking like he could be on his way to his first win at the Moda Super Series because he is starting to find. But maybe if they'd delayed the Premier League announcement to the end of the week, Glenn Durant would have been back in it. I'm hoping for my call up this year, but maybe next. 
81. This Glenn, you could be even better 81. than the last leg. That was one in 14 darts. Current here looking to go out in four visits. And that's a happy accident. It leaves him 60. Double top for a 12 dart leg. 41. He will be back. Forty. Glenn, you require forty. Well, all of a sudden, it's David Davis who cannot find anything. He's lost it. Where has it gone? And Durant's discovered it. That's a perfect guide. Get him shot and on he fifth uses leg. it expertly. And Glenn Durant has scrapped his way out of this. And now, sick leg. Like it's David to throw first. Glenn of old, the last Game couple on. of legs have been one in fourteen darts. He's turned it round from two nil down to three two up. Ninety nine. You just know inside he'll be bubbling with excitement and confidence at the prospect of turning this one around. Not just the fact he's been winning legs, 39. but how he's been winning legs. That's the encouraging sign here for Glenn. This is a bit of a freebie for him. The fact that he will have the throw if it does go all the way. Ninety. I'll go back to what he said, competitive. That's what he wanted to be. He has been in this game. And it looked like he might not be. 97. 108. Davis fires in his third maximum of this match, but to that third leg, which... Seemed to last for three legs. And the scruffy way it was won, but that's changed everything, hasn't it? David Davis could have destroyed Glenn Durant's night. He's weak at the Super Series if he'd won that leg. Instead, Glenn Durant's going to get at least a decider. Well, this is just a warning to the field, really, isn't it? Don't keep the man swinging, because he might start landing. 92. Not landing much in this leg, though. David Davies sets himself up on a double after 12. The likelihood is Glenn Durant's going to go into the, one of those sudden death legs. Well, the fact that Glenn Durant didn't go for the 18s to start that visit tells 70. me he assumes this David leg is over. 40. Just wanted to keep throwing at the treble 20. A bit of practice, if anything. Game shot and on the sixth over. leg. David Davies. And the match will be decided by one leg. It's a leg Seventh in which Durant final has leg. the dart. It's Glenn to throw first. First dart for Glenn Game has on. been quite positive. And that one above the wire was a ideal for Glenn. Held on to that first dart for a little longer than he has earlier in the match. I don't want to give yourself too much time to think. And I, I often think the players with the more deliberate throws are often aiding that devil on the shoulder just to permeate the mind a little bit. And when you're Glenn Durant, who feels like he's got a devil on both shoulders, that's not the dart he wants. He wants a dart above the wire, so that's why he's switching downstairs. Keeps himself interested. Big last start there from Glenn Durant. Davis keeping calm, carrying on. He knows what this tournament's all about. He knows how to win matches in this format and how to get to finals nights. No respecter of status. Oh, he's handling this very well, David Davies, and full credit to him because... The whole story 85. this week, the promotional content has all been around Glenn Durant returning to darts and being on this stage. The story of the night has been pretty much all about Glenn Durant, but David Davies is saying 97. he might be the reason you're coming to watch the darts tonight, but it's me you're going to be seeing in the winner's enclosure. 
Great darts. Great stuff from Glenn Durant. 140. Gets himself down David to a finish. A slightly better finish than David Davids. It's going to be a tough ass to take out the 137, but he will get a go at it. Fifty. Glenn, you require one hundred and thirty-seven. Option. It's tops. Give Glenn Durant his first defeat of the Eight night. Shot. It's and a the fantastic match. finish David there Davies. from David Davies, who hung in and resisted the Glenn Durant challenge. Glenn Durant trying to turn it around from 2 0 down. Dogged performance, two fourteen darters, and some very encouraging signs from Glenn Durant within that match. Be interesting to see how his night progresses. For David Davies, it's two from two. He's at the top of the table on four points. Coming on Whitehead, coming up next, taking on Paul Hogan, who's also looking to make it two from two. Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where David Davis has made it two wins from two to kickstart his night, both in four free matches, getting the better of a Glenn Down on the last leg to side of Dart with two 14 darters in the match, but it was Davies who picked up the two points. Right, our fourth game of the evening session sees Conan Whitehead in action up against Paul Hogan. And watching this one down in the commentary box is Matthew Edgar and Chris Murphy. Thank you very much, Henry. Yeah, well, we've just seen for the first time Glenn Durant on the Super Series stage and Something we're all kind of anticipating, building up to. To see how Duzzer would do. I think Mix is probably the best analysis. But before we get into this Whitehead Hogan meeting, just want to get some final analysis from the expert alongside me, Matthew Edgar, on, on Durant's first outing. Encouraging. I saw plenty of encouraging signs in there, but it's always easy first when you sat in this chair and you're sort of watching it on. I'm sure Game on. the Glenn Durant fans tuning in today, hoping to see Glenn Durant rediscover some of that form, would have thought exactly the same. They'd have thought there's some encouraging signs in there. The issue is, does Glenn Durant 55. see those encouraging signs? Because 
unfortunately with Glenn, Glenn is one of the most positive people I know, absolutely, about everybody else. When it comes 100. to himself, and certainly his own game, there's just no positivity there at the moment. You can really see that in his performance. 81. Yeah, well, fair play to David Davis. Two, four, three wins for him. That one against Durant, and then the opening match of the night against Conan Whitehead. It was the last couple of legs in that match. It was the 99. first couple of legs against Durant where he really shone David Davis. And Paul Hogan, to be fair, although there was some scruffy stuff in his win against Chris Lamon, he kind of shone as well, didn't he? He averaged 94. over 93 in a 4-2 success against the Dutchman. Ninety-eight, one hundred and thirty-seven, eighty-two. Conan, you require so the first leg on throw with Hogan on a slightly better checkout where he. Only needs one treble for a go here. That go would be at the bullseye if he does 39. get one treble. If he gets two, Paulie require 122. And he would take aim at double seven. There's one. Well, he has got two trebles, but he needed two in the same bed. So it's 56 remaining. Could leave double 18. He does like that double 18. Se 76. Check 86. Conan, you require 95. The choice here to start on the ball or you know, the more modern way, which is straight for the treble 19. Give himself two darts at the double, but that's a little bit awkward. 57. You would see the wobble of Ball the flight. You require 36. The dart as he smashed that one into the flight. Game shot on the first leg. Paul Hogan. Paul Hogan breaks the throat at the first possibility. Just like Second leg, it's the last game, Glenn first. Durant, he gets game a lot on. of local support. The same for Conan Whitehead. He'll have his Super League team tuning in this evening. 100. When he played here and picked up the Super Series title, I think he brought about three teams with him, didn't he, that night? 100. 60. And White are just giving a bit of visible frustration. Both these players will do that during the match. It's probably cancel each other out in that sense. And talk about feeding off the emotion of your opponent. But it's very rare this pair look that happy on the hockey. Though Hogan's got plenty to be happy about there. 180 reasons to smile. Forty one. Poorly require one hundred and sixty one. Didn't need to follow it with the blockbuster checkout, did the one hundred and sensible thing and teed up tops in the end, although the one was the kind of the wrong way around, but he'll take it. Told him just have a flick over to the scoreboard 60. just to see where Cody Whitehead was. 40. A good sign of a player just playing the board and just worrying about his own game. Game shot when on you do that, leg, you tend to do that in games where you feel like you're the better player, a game where you feel like it's all about you and it doesn't really matter what your Third opponent leg, does. Conan to throw first. Here's Paul Hogan game on. having those vibes in this match. Yeah, just 30 darts used to win the first two legs. That's a straight 100 average. 39. Conan Whitehead has found an awful lot of single ones so far. All, all kind of low as well in that smaller segment of the one. 45. You just see him there, feeling his shoulder a little bit. 85. 100. 
41. Another one this time in the big segment, but he's act, reacting with sort of a quizzical look, wondering why the darts are doing that. And if you don't know why, you can't correct it. 100. Sixty. The third day of action here for Conan Whitehead. He did take part in our Group A campaign, and at the moment, this is significantly his worst performance of all his matches so far. And yeah, not good at all from Whitehead. Forty-three. Poorly required. One hundred and sixteen. Could find himself very quickly three 0 behind and. Face losing the match 4 0. Hogan would have the darts in leg 4. 80. Once again, he chooses to leave that double 18. It is a real favourite of his. 81. Nothing happening here for Whitehead. 81. And just cursing whoever designed the dart 36. board and decided to put the one next to the 20, isn't he? I think that person has been cursed many times over it's the years. On the third leg, Paul Hogan. But that's a double breaker throw there for Paul Hogan, and he's winning this at a bit Fourth of a canter. Thirty points, the difference between the averages. Three legs that equates to in the differences on the scoreboard, and he is absolutely relentless in his attack for this victory. It's going higher. A couple of maximums. Conan White's only managed a couple of tons. The the difference in the scoring is forty five. Incredible, really. Look at that, just two three figure visits. And Paul Hogan matched that in one eighties alone. And that makes it difficult to add to that tally. Paul's last score was 140. I'm just getting a little correction on the score, but Conor White doing the right thing here, leaving 45. his darts in, so his score can be called correctly. Well, Jack Gower, the referee, was looking away. If that was me, I'd have moved them. Problem is, you'd probably still missed. You'd have ended up with three. 140. Well, it's been an enormous golf in this match, and the scores in this leg reflect it. 370 points before Conan White has finally got his first Poorly 140 required, of the game. It's going to be irrelevant, I feel sure, because it's five for double 18. He absolutely loves it, and, and he absolutely loves that performance and win. An 11 data to seal it for a very happy Hogan, who averages 103.66 in a whopping whitewash of Whitehead. There are the stats. Four out of six on the doubles. Whitehead only managed a couple of darts at double early in the game, but could barely find a treble in that match and could find himself in trouble in this tournament. Hogan winning both of his first two games, as had David Davis, Glenn Durant and Chris Landman looking for their first wins when they go head-to-head -head next.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series. But before the break, Paul Hogan averaged 103.66 in a 4 0 victory against Conan Whitehead. Chris Lamman is in action up next. He squandered a 4 a 2 0 lead against Paul Hogan in his first game of the night. He takes on Glenn Durant, who took David Davies all the way in his opener. Both looking to get their first wins of the night down in Coventry. To describe all the action, it's Matthew Edgar alongside Chris Murphy. Thank you very much, Henry. Yep. We have another look at Glenn Durant, a debutant here at the Super Series. Could be the start of some special kind of career. Takes on Chris Lamman, who reached the final at the Lakeside in December. First leg, it's Chris to throw first. And Glenn Durant himself knows a thing or two about that particular tournament. The three stars on the back of his shirt representing the 100. three Lakeside World Championship victories. For Glenn Durant. Forty. Would have been around this time of year. It'd have been deep in some of those lakeside campaigns. Eighty one. In fact, there have been some famous world championships on this darting day. I know that a few of you enjoy that particular feature. Remember some of these, Matthew? 2015 on this day, the Gary Anderson Phil Taylor final when Anderson won 7 6. 140. Phil Taylor beating Barney in 2009. In the year 2000, Dennis Priestley going down to Phil Taylor. 25. Taylor beating Priestley in 98, but the one that sticks out for me, 2004 on this day, Phil Taylor 7, Kevin Painter 6. Some legendary games. One hundred and forty the years, and Glenn Durant will be hoping to roll back some of those years and bring some of those legendary darts here to the Super Series stage. Certainly, plenty of encouraging signs for Glenn. Well, you mentioned that Landman's played at a similar standard all week, and it's not far above the standard that Glenn produced. In his first match against Davis, in fact, take out the, the really Chris bad leg in that match. Then Glenn knows that he can live with Landman's level. Not if he does stuff like this, though. Game shot and the he first hits leg. Chris Glenn Landman. Durant with a haymaker straight away. Kind of has a similar feeling to what David Second Davis leg, did when he hit 2 1 H's in the opening leg. This time, Game though, it's a checkout. But I do think there lies part of the problem when you mention about Glenn Durant knows that he's got the levels to live with or beat these players. He would have been beating the players 59. that are in this group many a times during his time on the BDO. We speak about the game coming up with Conan Whitehead in the last fixture where he's got an 8-0 head-to-head record against Conan Whitehead. And I remember being at a pro tour with Glenn Durant where he's having a bit of a practice on one of the boards. And I'm not going to say the player with which he drew, but he drew a player 100. and he went, oh no. Because I have never had this player ever get close to me in my life. I always 100. beat him. And I still don't feel like I'm going to go and get this result. I was not confident. The positive result of the past, in fact, made it a negative for him. Because he feared on losing such a dominant record. Stuff. 60. Mentioned beat many of these players in those days. He does have a significant match against Chris Lamb, and it was in a final on the Isle of Man. <laughs> it was a significant final, actually. 85. Do you remember what specifically happened in the final? I know the scoreline was 5 3, but I'll let you uh, fill us in. Maybe it'll have to be after this leg, though. There you go. Full story coming up after this. Spoiler. 170. Teaser. Is Glenn Durant going to tease a finish? 17. He's looking for a 12 there, Durant. Chris, you require 64. Game shot on the second leg. Lamman Chris takes full advantage. You see the Durant drop of the head there. Yeah, that final in the Isle of Man, 2018. Third leg, it's Chris when to Durant throw first. beat Landman to win that tournament. 
And I believe Matthew Edgar's got a story to tell. Well, he actually beat him twice in that final. 100! Or at least he thought he did. He threw a dart at the double six. Charlie Costafine, I believe, was the referee that day. And he threw a dart, and it was on the wire of the double 16. He expected to wear a game shot. He let out an almighty, get in! Yes! Gave it the big uppercut as if he was on Mortal Kombat. And the referee just calls out the 140. score. Realises he hasn't won it, gets his darts out, Landman has his throw, he comes back, then he actually hits the double. No celebration that time. So he actually believed he won it twice. So good back in the day, he could win things twice. I had a very similar experience in Slovenia last year. I 137. went ahead by five legs to three, turned around to shake the guy's hand, and he says, no, it's first to six. 100. Does that story end with you losing? No, I won that leg 163. I wouldn't have told the story <laughs> if I'd have lost, would I? I'd have left that one out. Just because you didn't mention it, I thought there must be another well, aspect you, to this. You know, there's nothing like self praise around here. Well, there have been 96. some big ones like that, haven't there? The Christian Require, Van Diver Boda Bust against Raymond Van Barneveld. Devin Peterson, miscount of the World Cup. 65. Amazing, a simple game. And produce so many moments of madness. Chris Landman's making it look like a simple game at the moment. That one five five starter Chris, you require has been 96. built upon. Two out of two on the doubles, averaging 103. Can rescue this on treble 17, which he does. The two up tops again. 76. Can't find it this Glad time. you require 151. the talk here about 93 Glenn Durham but the Chris talk is going to swiftly change towards Chris Landman who is averaging a fraction over a ton here game shot on a third leg Chris a Landman painful last start just when you think you're going to get an opportunity you stood at the back of the stage you've heard the first Fourth two leg. darts it's miss to throw first game on Three nil, Landman. Ninety nine. With an uphill task now. Just wonder as well mentally if that if that sixty determination, that aim to be competitive, might be a hindrance as well. Because how many times do we say it when a player thinks the game is over, suddenly they start to to find the best dart? But and Durant will be determined not to lose the game four nil. Sometimes 60. that can be counterproductive. Well, essentially, he's trying to find something without trying. 60. And that's the thing in this game, isn't it? You know, uh, we've been saying it, a lot of people new to it. It's the blend of concentration and relaxation that you're trying to find. Two opposites. 58. Try without trying is a great way of putting it. 43. Well, he's in this one. He's heading the scoring stage by about 50 points after the front nine exchange. The average for Glenn Durant here is in the high 80s. You'd 59. If he stays consistent around that sort of level, he's going to get opportunities across this campaign. 125. Forty-six may not get an opportunity here. Glenn Durant hasn't had a dart a double in the entire match. Ninety-seven. There's been one that's. Played with Chris, quite flat flights. Never really squares them off, does he, Glenn Durant? One hundred. 
Glenn, you require 149. I think there are loads of people willing this to go in and not see Glenn Durant whitewash, but it looks like that that's the way it's going to go. Lamont started the game really well. 25. Durant hasn't recovered. Christian requires 16. And it is double eight game shot for a 4 0 success. Glenn Durant shakes the hand of Chris Lamont, who gets the victory. His first of the night. And gone down to Paul Hogan earlier this evening. Durant denied a single dart at the outer ring in the entire match because Lamb was so proficient on it. Four out of seven, including that superstar to the one five five. And he is off the mark in group B. David Davis and Paul Hogan, well, they're more than off the mark. They've won both of their matches so far. And they go head to head after the break.
Very warm welcome back to the Motor Super Series. We are midway through the evening's action, which means it's time to get the assessment of Matthew Edgar down here in the bowels of the Motor Super Series. Right, these are the results on the gains that we have seen so far this evening. Kick started with David Davis getting the better color white by falling three. In fact, we've seen him win both of his matches in last leg deciders. Paul Hogan also perfect on night one thus far as i say matt alongside me up here well down here actually in the bowels of the super series backstage let's begin by talking about david davies because he's a player that we've seen here a few times here at the live lounge a player we said is an improving player and he's put in a couple of big performances he's had to win two games for free and he's come up clutch when it's mattered Oh, mightily impressive tonight with David Davies and the way in which he's played. Chris Murphy saying at the very start of the show that he feels he gets better every time he comes. I fully agree. I seem to be here every time that David Davies is here as well. And the level of performance, the level of composure, the level of grit and determination that is now within his game, he's starting to believe in himself and believe in what he can do. And it's really coming across on the hockey. So in the way Glenn came back at him in that game, that one fourteen was really clutch, wasn't it? It really was, and like I say, the way Glenn came back at him, David Davies 2-0 up, looked like he was going to go 3-0 up, looked like he was going to find this to be an easy night's work in that opening game. However, it's always hard when you're playing someone like Glenn because when he hits a 14 dart, you think, oh, is this the moment that it all turns around for Glenn Durant? Is this the moment he's going to start hitting? It's one of the hardest things to do. Play a player who's got that much respect around their game, expecting that at any moment they're going to switch it on. Well, the other player who's had a perfect night thus far is Paul Hogan. He's also won two from two this evening. But it began quite bizarrely, didn't it, against Chris Landman? It did, but it's the old story, isn't it? It's not how the story starts, it's how the story ends. And at the moment, the ending of that story is looking like it's going to be a very good one for Paul Hogan because he is playing some of the best darts, some of the most composed darts and the most consistent darts, not just of tonight but of what we've seen so far this week. At the moment, for the week, Paul Hogan is the standout player in terms of the standards he's hitting. Yeah, 103 average in that second game. This is how it all correlates at the halfway point of the night. This is the league table. Paul Hogan and David Davis both leading the way, both having won two from two. In fact, Paul Hogan's dropped just a couple of legs, those couple of legs to Chris Lamon in the process. Lamon, who got the better of Durant by four legs to nil in there. Conan White and Glenn Dart yet to pick up a point. Let's talk about Glenn because, look, he is, he's, he's the big name. He's the big draw in terms of this group. How would you assess the way that he's played so far this evening? I think my assessment of Glenn is going to be different to Glenn's assessment of Glenn. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. I can stand here with this microphone now and say there's been encouraging signs, which there has been. I can sit here and pick out the positivities. Glenn would do exactly the same. In my position right now, we'd do that in a position when he speaks to anyone. Glenn Durant is one of the most positive people I have ever met in my life. He's got nothing but positive vibes, and he'll find a positive in any situation for everybody else. When it comes to his own self-assessment, he's a little bit too harsh on himself. And I think it doesn't really matter how I assess it. Glenn's not going to be happy with how it's gone so far. And that, unfortunately, is just going to lead to more negativity. Well, Glenn, following this week's exploits, is going to be in the commentary box for next week's action. And these are the players that he is going to be commentating on. This is week eight. John Worsley, Matt Clark and Neil Duff, the headline names in Group A. Conor McGarry, star of the world seniors, is our uh, ADC qualifier. Now, there's an interesting name at the top of Group B. It's not Martin Adams. It's you, Matthew Edgar, back in action. So, Glenn Durant is going to have the opportunity to do the world reverse next week how these things come around a, a very very late decision to be in this group and it's a great group to be involved in in there with a legend of the game like martin adams gary stone someone i actually thought would go on and win lakeside this year so a really really good group b the, the thing is like glenn said at the start of this one he said he's been avoiding darts for a bit of time. I've got ambitions to go and try and take on that Lakeside title. I'm a long, long way off of being ready, but the road has to start somewhere. So why not have it start here at the Super Series? I'm not expecting anything spectacular. I'm not ex I'll am not. i talk a better game than I can throw, <laughs> that's for sure. But I'm looking forward to getting things started, getting back on the hockey again after quite some serious setbacks. Week for the big names, though. Well, he's very... Are we talking about names as in like the size of names, like the amount of letters that are in the names? <laughs> we get we get quite a few big ones in there. But that that group B, that that's a good one next week. I'm I'm really looking forward to that. 
Well, we'll watch the action Monday morning from 9.30 a.m. Right, our sixth game of the session sees the top two go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Somebody's O's got to go. And David Davis takes on Paul Hogan. Matt's going to race his way down to the comments box to describe the action with Chris Murphy. Yeah, indeed. And there are a couple of players that have won both their games, as mentioned. David Davis with a little bit more drama, really, than Paul Hogan. He's won 4-3 against both Conan Whitehead and Glenn Durant. Hogan hammered Whitehead 4-0 in the fourth match, having got past Chris Landman 4-2. He's there for top of the table. First Based leg, on it's David leg to difference, throw first. Four better off than Davis. Whitehead and Landman play next. There is a scenario that um, last match of the night will be the pickup. First points between Glenn Durant and Conan White. Davis still has Chris Landman to play after this. Hogan still has Durant to play. A bit of a revenge mission as well. Well, 100. It'd be Hogan or Davis that are going into their final matches looking to complete the card. Matthew Edgar, fresh from the announcement that he will be playing on the Super Series stage next week. 81. Has sat down. Alongside me, is that why you've been saying pretty kind things about Glenn all night? I don't know what I'm doing getting up there again this 100. early. It's, uh, it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting, that's for sure. Just lucky that I'm in a group with some good players there, or put me out my misery should it begin. I always find that particular week 40. quite interesting because it does correlate with the PDC's Q school, which means that the players that are participating here at the Super Series are not going to Q school. Were there any names on the list that you thought might have given it a go? Gary Stone, I thought, might have gone and give Q school a go. He's an ex-PDC tour card holder. He's playing some very good darts at the moment. I half expected to see him 100. having a All you attempt at Q school. John Worsley, someone who missed Q school, obviously ambition to go back there at the moment. 97. But there is the shift David as well within the Pro Tour now, with them all going midweek. That maybe that just makes a few people make those decisions. Yeah, good point. All change in the darting landscape in more ways than one of late. 100. But no change Paul tonight from Paul 24. Hogan. He's carrying on playing at a supreme level here. An excellent standard. Double six to keep it going. 18. Missed his David opportunity, and now David Davis can pick his pocket. Game shot on a first leg, David Davies. Second leg, it's Paul to throw first. Game on. One hundred and forty. Eighty-five. One hundred and forty. Landed a lot of big scores tonight, Paul Hogan. He's one of those players you traditionally put down as a jabber, someone who will land quite a lot of the ton-plus scores, but doesn't often fill up the 96. 140 plus and 180 columns as much as he is tonight. He is landing some big haymaker blows. I mean, that he's got more aspects to his game than just that consistent 16. brilliance that he's shown throughout of his years. Yeah, he did play some really, really good stuff at that World Seniors match play in, in York towards the back end of last year. Really enjoyed... 60. Paul Hogan's performances Paul there. require 161. Beat Phil Taylor in the process, of course. 45. Phil Taylor having his final year this year on the seniors tour before retiring permanently from the darting scene. 36. Poorly require 116. Brilliant. And he'll tee up 
Double 18, of course he will. 80. Makes you wonder if we'll see Phil Taylor hoist one of those titles up in the air this year. Pretty sure. Every Darcy fan will be hoping so. Lee Taylor. 100. And just one more title. Bit of nostalgia. Double 18, favourite double here for Paul Hogan. He converts leg. it with Paul the opening Hogan. dart. 16 data of his own. Now you mentioned Taylor Hogan beat him. Third leg, it's David to throw Eight, first. Six in the quarterfinals of the match play, but the real standout display was actually the first round win against Scott Mitchell. Also 8-6, both players averaging around the 95 mark, which is an excellent standard for seniors darts. Eventually bowed out against 54. Then the Gates in the semi-final we mentioned earlier, having averaged north of 19 every single game he played in the tournament. Always been 100. a dangerous player. They used to call him the professional amateur Paul Hogan. So, so adept at qualifying for the Lakeside for the UK Open. He holds records for coming through last chance 25. amateur qualifiers to play in those tournaments. Arguably one of the, if not the best, from the amateur qualifier 100. system that's ever appeared at the UK Open. Obviously, there's going to be various people you'd put up in competition. Remember Barry Lynn? Yeah, beat Gary Anderson, didn't he? Paul Hogan also beating Gary Anderson, 100. beat Adrian Lewis at the UK Open as well. Nearly took out Gerwin Price. I believe that was in the snow year, wasn't it? The Beast of the East being the main attraction at Minehead that year. Yeah, it was a fun old tournament. Anderson actually won that one, didn't he? Beating Corey Cadby in the final. We well, say fun old tournament. I'm 60. guessing you wasn't there at that one then. Paulie require 100. So there was nothing fun about being in <laughs> Butlins that weekend. Uh, I was actually, but um, it snowed that badly. I was actually meant to commentate on board two, and the main stage got moved to board 95. two. I just had the weekend off. That was fun. If I remember rightly, uh, let's say Moda Super Series, but let's say the previous guys, the 90. Live League Paulie legend, that is Rob Owen actually reached a semi-final in that tournament, as did a certain John Part. What an event. Game well, it's an ordinary event for Paul Hogan, Hogan hitting double 18. Fourth leg, it's Paul to throw first. Game on. I actually got knocked out in that tournament by someone who's been very successful here at the Super Series. He'll 60. be playing in Champions Week, Steve West. And he actually did that with two 170 finishes. Wow. I was sick. If you are watching, Steve, get well 60. soon. I still don't forgive you, though, Steve. <laughs> yeah, ready for Champions Week, but... Made up at the moment, recovering from a long-awaited operation. Nicely got 60. qualified nice and early. He'll have ni a nice bit of time to heal before playing in Champions Week. I think he might need quite a bit of time. Have you seen the photo of it? Yeah. yeah it looks like it stings a bit. 57. He can't just put a plaster on that one. Certainly won't be running it off. That's one more weeks than anyone here at the 60. Super Series. Steve West. Who will win this week? There are some real key protagonists in this week's action. You've seen the five of them playing tonight. If you are tuning in for the first time this week, then we've got 56. a real treat. We'll pass sleeves tomorrow with a double session decision day in this group and Group C, which features Steve Brown, Colin Osborne, Ron Mullenkamp, Daryl Pilgrim. 140. Along with ADC qualifiers, Jeroen Caron and Kevin Garcia. And Robert Thornton is already through to finals night once again. For the 10th time, the Thorn will play on a Saturday at the Super Series. 43. Truly has to still be one of the biggest surprises. Not the Robin 39. Hood from Paul Hogan, but the fact that the Thorn has never won. 
on a Saturday night here. I'm going to say yet, because the likelihood is he will eventually. One hundred forty. Poorly require one hundred and forty-two. Does he stay there? That was the intention. Ninety-five. David, you require one hundred and forty-five. Ninety. Poorly require forty-seven. Again, he elects for double eighteen. Twenty nine. This time he doesn't get it. David, you require fifty five. So it's tops of Davis, Gage and he finds of that. Flag. David two, Davis. Two. Still nothing between this pair who are unbeaten tonight. David Davis, remember, has won both of his matches. In last leg deciders, flag, it's David is to this throw one first. going the distance as well? Game on. Do you know in TV, is it congenuity the word? It's... David Davies obviously hasn't subscribed to that philosophy. You'll see here that he's got some pear-shaped flights. 60. But the flight that's on the back of his shirt looks a bit more like a kite. Yeah, off brand. One hundred. Very much on brand with his crocodile Dundee style flights. The exact same image as the one on the back of his shirt. Did he do a walk on once at fifty? Mine head where he had a giant blow up crocodile. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah. It's a good thing about. I'm in mean, a tournament of the seaside. If you ever do think, do you know what? I fancy doing a walk up with a giant crocodile. It's quite easy to find one at the seaside because they've got all the floats. I thought you were going to say you could use it again. There have been some interesting walk ons in the world of darts. 140. On part with a full Star Trek posse once. I don't think anything will ever beat Bob Anderson's horse. Uh, that was a real horse. We was very close. I remember a World Series event, Devin Peterson came on, he stood on one of them hoverboards and nearly fell off it. Had he have fell off it, that would have been the greatest walk I have ever seen in my life. 100. Oh, we can hear where Matthew Edgar gets his kicks. <laughs> 100. David, you require 151. All right. One, five, one. Not going to go. One, oh, one. One hundred and thirty one. Poorly require one hundred and one. Double fifteen for you know what. Sixty five. David, you require twenty. Double 10 for the lead. Paul Hogan looking to the heavens. 15. And he gets a little bit of help from the man upstairs. Poorly require 36. What do you reckon, Matt? Four double 16. Twenty-seven. Well, the darting gods may have given him the David opportunity, but he wasn't able five. to take it. David Davies put himself a leg away from the match. Starting downstairs, up to the madhouse. Didn't attack it. Game shot. But he does find leg. it. One, up, one in the double one rule, and David Davies takes the leg, leads the match three-two. Sick One of the things that we've been to throw first. obviously observing Paul Game Hogan on. constantly leaving double eighteen with mixed success. 
For me, it's one of the puzzling things about darts. There are a lot of players who've got a bit of a penchant for double 18. But there's a huge risk factor leaving that particular double. What are your thoughts on it? Are you kind of a subscriber to, well, let's go double 16, play it safe and let it all break down? Or do you think... Should have the favourites. I'll do whatever I can to leave double 16 at all possibilities and twists and turns because that is obviously my favourite double, a double of choice. And the patterns of play that I will have through the leg from even at times the first three darts in the leg is all designed to get me down to that double 16. Certain things like using the 17s. If I do use a 19, I might go 19 100. and over to 18s. So they're all patterns and plays to get you down to your favourite place. From double 16. 100. You know, four more times without having to use another dart to get to a double. You can just keep going for doubles. That's why it is the age-old preference. 137. you were playing in a, a double start tournament, Matt, would you still go for double 16? Oh, absolutely. 60! Wouldn't fancy a nine data? I wouldn't hit it anyway, so <laughs> I might as well not bother. Seventy-eight. Poorly require one hundred and forty-four. Oh, brilliant stuff. First dart threatened the big finish. 96. David, you require 108. It'll be interesting to see which way he goes on 48 if he gets the opportunity. Will his obsession with double 18 be so strong that he'd go for a 12? Or will he do the Matthew Edgar approved route and go 16 for double 16? Will he require 48? There's the answer. A brief vacation from double 18 for Paul Hogan. He's on a sick flag. Paul Hogan. And he levels a match at three apiece. Seventh and final leg. It's David to throw first. Game on. Do you know what I liked about David Davies there? He was happy with the ton, leaving the shot, leaving the opportunity. He was giving himself a little bit of a well done. 65. But he was doing it out to the side of the body. To the point where if Paul Hogan was actually looking, Paul Hogan would be very aware. But it could yet be a win for either 100. player, but it's already the worst result of the night for Paul Hogan. Wins of 4-0 and 4-2. It could match the best results of the night for David Davis if he does win it, because they've all been in seven legs. Although those darts won't help. That was an optimistic look 63. at the scoreboard, wasn't it, from David Davis at that stage of the leg? Well, David Davis has had scores of 65 and 63 100. in his first two visits, but it's been the last start that's found the treble on both occasions, just sort of digging himself out of the hole and giving himself a little bit of a lifeline. This time it's the first start that's perfect. And the second follows, 108. as does the third, and Davis is closing in. On making it a hat trick of last leg decider triumphs. 60. A shake of the head for Paul Hogan. Bit of a tell that comes in Paul Hogan games when you know you're getting on top. That is what David Davis is doing here. He drives home the advantage. The 180. Telling score that's done the damage so far. 60. David, you require the 147. Reaction, the anger from Hogan. He knows the game might be up here. It's 147 for Davis and six starts to do it. May only use three. May only use three. And may do it. 111. I was going to say, by hoisting Hogan by his petard. He may still. One hundred. David require thirty six. Be heartbreaking for Hogan to lose a match on double eighteen. But that's Game what shot happens. And the match. 
David and David Davis is the master of last leg shootouts. He's won three of them tonight. He's won three matches tonight. He's had a perfect night so far, and he could maintain that. And he takes on Chris Landman in his closing match of the evening. There are the numbers. Not as high a standard from Davis as it was in his previous two encounters, but he got the job done effectively, bailed himself out with a maximum in that last leg, and didn't look back from there. Hogan defeated for the first time. Conan Whitehead, the Series 1 champion, still looking for a first win tonight. Last time he was in Group B, he lost all four matches on a Thursday, looking to avoid that fate when he faces Chris Landman after this. Welcome back. Chris Landman in action up next. He got the better of Glenn Durrant 4-0 in the fifth game of the evening session. He takes on the former champion Conan Whitehead looking to get his first win on the board. Before the break, we saw David Davis make it three wins from three, defeating Paul Hogan in a last leg to side. That's the third time consecutively that the Welshman has won a game by the margin of four legs to three. But anyway, let's get into our seventh match of the session. It is Whitehead up against Landman and in the commentary box, it is Matthew Edgar. Alongside Chris Murphy. Yeah, here we go. And here goes Co looking to get off the mark for the night. He was decent enough against David Davis in the open, but it all went first horribly leg, wrong against Paul Conan Hogan first. in his second match. Game on. I think maybe the silver lining here for Conan White it is the fact that he's playing the, the two players that haven't had those brilliant evenings. Landman, of course, does have a win to his name. It was a heavy one as well against Glenn Durrant. He was beaten by Hogan, and Whitehead should feel the last two games are winnable. 140. But the other thing you've got to remember is a lot of the fear comes not because you're scared of winning, it's the fear of losing, and when you come here and you've maybe got that little bit 100. of tension or nerves around what the evening may bring, and you start off with a couple of defeats, You've already got what you were fearing happening in the 60. first place. So it actually makes the rest of the task a bit easier because what have you got to fear? It's often the fear of something happening rather than it happening that makes it feel worse. 
You're a believer in mental... Tissue, I mentioned the stat earlier that on that Champions Week, White had lost all of his matches on the Thursday and left himself with too much to do to get to the finals night. He could be now thinking, 60. not again. I mean, we've kind of got advocates here for mental scar tissue. The things I was saying when my name came up as playing in the, this series and also what we're seeing with Glenn Durant. He's not playing the battle of today. He's playing the battle of the last couple of years. One hundred and forty. Sometimes where you, you're going through that, you'd love to throw 40. like Chris Landman, wouldn't you? You just want to get rid of the darts as quickly as possible. Gordon White wants to get rid of the leg as quickly as possible. He's got a double-barreled marker there, but no he score. can't find his way into the double. Chris That's unfortunate. They were well-thrown darts. I've said that a lot about Conan Whitehead this week, where he's thrown good darts but 25. got very little reward at times. Conan, you require forty. Well, that's a terrible one. So this will go in. Game shot on the first leg. Conan Whitehead. Perfect markers in the previous visit. Couldn't find the double. That one way off the mark and in pops top to Whitehead to take the Second lead. Leg. It's Chris but to not first. to break the throw, Co. Game on. One hundred and forty. Eighty-five. Well, I'm responding well. One four five after nine. One hundred. Chris, you require one hundred and forty-five. Eighty-five. He's going to leave a finish here, Conan White. 85. Chris, you require 60. One. Game shot Doesn't in the matter second either leg. way what he Chris leaves. Because he's not going to get a shot at it. Landman. Pop, pop, finish. 20 tops. Third leg. It's Conan to nice throw first. Clean. Game on. Confidence building finish that. Whitehead. Starting to spray him around the board a little bit again. Losing the lie with all three of those darts. Offering encouragement here for Landman to try and get that 100. break of throw. 57. Eighty-five. One hundred. Well, this is 59. the seventh match of ten tonight. Paul Hogan meets Glenn Durant next. Endurance only halfway through his evening. Three games to come after this, but he's going to appear in two of them against Hogan and Conan 40. Whitehead. Both have got a little bit of history of Glenn Durant. Conan's never beaten him, and of course, Hogan almost did beat him and end. Endurance starting dream. 137. How different things could have been. Sixty. Chris, you require one hundred and twenty. Sixty for tops. Not happening. 
Colonel 60. Mike said all he can do is find a way to leave a finish and then hope that Landman doesn't do what he did in the previous leg and take out 60. One hundred and thirty-three. Christian requires sixty. It was the first bit, and the second 40. bit goes his way as well. Conan, you require one hundred. That makes the big visit all worthwhile now for Conan Whitehead. But loses the line again. This is happening far too much in this game. That's where you start getting concerned. You start. 25. Panicking because he can't Pressure at least keep the dart straight. 20. Game shot on the third leg. Chris Lambert. Oh, had almost throwing his arms out to the side. It's a breaker throw, though, there for Chris Lambert. Fourth Landman. leg. It's Chris to throw first. Conan Whitehead stood pondering what is going wrong right now. He does have one more fixed strap. Still to go after this one. 44. But that's the fixture he was worried about before the night began. The one against the former Lakeside champion. Former Premier League winner. 60. One hundred and forty. Forty three, eighty five, forty nine. Just starting to slip away again from Conan White, and he's not reaching the levels tonight that we know he can reach. Remember, this is a player. One hundred. Earlier in the week, just yesterday, was a couple of legs away from actually getting straight through to finals night. Robert Thornton beat Colin Osborne four three in the last match of that group. Had that been four two, one hundred and thirty five in Osborne's favour, Conan Christian Whitehead require one hundred and thirty two would have actually already been through to Saturday. And Robert 60. Thornton himself, he said it on that stage, and it's something that is a slight bone of contention. I have to have to be honest about saying he'd rather have been playing Thursday and Friday than having won on Wednesday. But 57. how many times you see players that just Christian miss out and 72. don't make it to Saturday? Surely you'd rather be at Saturday, however you get there. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that's really easy to say Don't once you're there, but given the choice before you went on to that match, you would have been telling you that that was a big, big fixture. It's like this is a big finish here for Conan Whitehead, not only for the sake of the 157 points, but the sake to get him back into the game and back into the positive mindset. 40. He misses tops. Miss Lamman misses tops. He misses double 10 by a country mile. 33. And then double seven is Conan, you squandered as 20. well. What a reprieve for Conan Whitehead. Game who shows him where it is. Flag, Conan Whitehead. And squares up the match at 2-2 and takes back control. Still hasn't found a, a 140 flag, Conan or better first. in this game. Game on. Conan Whitehead. Scrapping, he's staying in it. One hundred. One hundred. That's why I love the Super Series and this short format games. Literally a couple of minutes ago, we were thinking about Whitehead. Going 3-1 down and being in trouble in this game. All of a sudden, he's now the favourite once again. Just a exchange of about 15 darts. 100. 60. 
Long old darts going on Whitehead. See the length of those almost filling the full, full split screen camera 100. shot. Don't know the darts or javelins, are they? 140. Conan, you require 160. Is, have a bit bored on a Sunday. He gets a bit fed up for the darts. He can always go jousting. You can get things with those darts. 92. You? Chris, you require 104. Take him down the Chinese and use them as chopsticks. 56. Conan, you require 68. Can he tuck into this? Number 68, please. Oh, 60. that's unlucky. Chris, you require 48. And Landman can make him pay. Very much a tops man. I don't know why with a dart like that. And that's 30. not the first time in this match that he's thrown a dart away. Eight. Target on a double. Game shot on a fifth leg. Conan Whitehead. And it's Whitehead who this time dishes out the punishment. And leads a match. 3-2. Sick leg. It's Chris to throw first. Game on. 140. Fifty-nine. One hundred and forty. Eighty five. One hundred. Is this going to go the distance? It's been the order of the night, really. It's all or nothing. 60. 4 3 in the first match, 4 3 in the third match, 4 3 in the last match, and then two 4 nils in between those two. It seems to be sucking the pace out of this game here, Conan Whitehead. 125. Even though you Chris, you require 125. A little bit more subdued. Well, that's a bit of a mistake. And Chris Landman can't complete the combo now. So Conan Whitehead Conan lurking around with his baseball bat. Can he whack Landman around the head with it? Game shot. Double and the top match. he gets. Conan Whitehead. And he gets off with the points as well. A 4 2 win for Whitehead. His first points of the night. His first victory of Group B. And the same old thing won't be happening that happened last time because he defeats Chris Landman to go level on points. That's really important as well. Don't forget, Landman could have pulled clear in third place. The top three going through in this group. Whitehead now all square. And if Glenn Durant can get a victory against Paul Hogan. And he will join the party as well. Stay tuned for that. It's coming next.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series. Before the break, the former champ, Conan Whitehead, got his first win of the night, getting the better of Chris Lamman by four legs to two. Right, next up on the stage, Paul Hogan in action. His final game of the evening. He lost his first game of the night last time out. 4-3 to David Davis. Looking to make it three from four to end his first night. And he takes on Glenn Durrant. This game has got, well, quite the significance for both in their darting career. That famous fixture at the Lakeside back in 2017. And I'm sure giving us a trip down memory lane as well as describing the darts. It's Matthew Edgar alongside Chris Murphy. Yeah, let's cast our minds back to the 11th of January 2017 when Paul Hogan and Glenn Durrant did battle on the lakeside stage and Hogan was all set to beat him. Looked like he was going to knock Durrant out. But in the end... First leg, it's Paul to throw ben first. Durrant turned it around. He was 3-0 in sets and 2-0 in legs behind and went on to beat Paul Hogan 4-3 and went on to win the world championship 59. in that lakeside tournament and well the rest is history what i did find interesting from glenn durant's interview earlier he said he's been waiting seven years for this game surely it should be the other way around 140 36 it's one of those games when there's history on the line. Got that negativity of all those years gone by. You don't let it go. It comes around with you. That baggage sits and see Paul Hogan already animated. 60. We're only six starts in. Has he got the hoodoo over Hoagie Van Durant? Had a bit of time off since his 45. previous match. It was a unwanted outcome for Glenn Durant that 4-0 thrashing at the hand of Chris Landman. Been able to regather his thoughts in the practice room over a couple of 45. lengthy darting duels since then. Including one that saw Paul Hogan lose for the first time tonight. So he could go from what was looking 60. like a perfect evening to an average one if he, he loses again in this match. And Glenn Durant could still do the opposite of that from a disastrous night to a okay one if he gets a couple of wins between now 100. and the end of this evening's Arrows action. 45. Competitive was the goal from 45. Glenn Durant, and he's been Glenn, more than that at times. If he was working with a player, he would be picking out all those positive moments and trying to build on pot top of those. 100. It's always harder to do it when it's yourself. You're always your most harshest of critics. 100. Glenn, you require 56. Well, he's had a nice little bit of breathing space all throughout this opening leg. He's been hit with hard stuff in opening Inside legs tonight, leg, but it's Glendorin. he who hits first. Glenn Durant off the mark. He faced two 180s from Second David leg, Davis in his first match first. tonight in the first leg. Game he on. was on the wrong end of a whopping 155 checkout by Chris Landman in his second in the opening leg. Durant does very well to just leave Paul Hogan 100. a long way behind him as he goes out with little drama. One hundred and forty. One hundred and forty. For the first time tonight, I sat watching the throw side of the screen, which is the side that Glenn Durant has been forty-one saying he's been overthinking on for quite some time. And every time he threw there, I just went, yes, yes. Same thing again here. Look at that aggression and zip in the throw here from Duzza. 108! You mentioned he's concerned about the lack of the drawback. The way to compensate that is with that extra pace, that extra zip. 140! 
Check 85. Glenn, you require 81. Paul Hogan just correcting the score. They're very kind, Paul. Glenn Durrant has produced a superb leg of darts, and it could be a dozen, dozen. 61. Oh, almost, but he's going to come back to try and double his lead in this match. Eighty-one. Glenn, you require twenty. Fifteen. Paul, you require one hundred and fifty. Bit of an overreaction in that spot from Durant. In that spot, as a one-off isolated incident, you'd say yes, but. Glenn Durant's Glenn not just playing the game five. here. Glenn Durant's battling with himself, and he's been battling with himself for some years. No he's score. missed the big number now. All he requires, 16. It was all looking so good. He was looking like he was going to go out in potentially 12 darts. He might end up losing the leg. No score. Glenn, you require five. Oh, the first part is not to miss the big number. And he's managed that. Number one. No score. Can't manage that. Paulie requires 16. Frustration etched on the face of Glenn Durant. Game shot on the second Paul Hogan, leg. Paul Hogan. The happy recipient of that gift. Visibly struggling. Glenn Third Durant. Third leg. It's Paul to throw first. A brilliant first Game leg. On. But then just making a little bit of a mess at the end of that one. And it's. Just the hangover of that, trying to overcome it, not let the previous leg or the 83. previous visit affect the next one. It's the easiest thing to say. It must be the hardest thing to do. Certainly when you're not feeling very positive as well. 100. Sometimes even positive outcomes, tons, 140s, 180s. It's not enough to get you out of that mindset if you don't truly believe 100. Still think he's playing better than he was come the end of 2022, that horrendous final season on the Pro Tour. There was 26. plenty of signs for me, not in the World Championship, but in the match play on the World Seniors Tour when he lost out to, to Jim McEwen. I think he played some really good stuff in that. And we've seen the old sign tonight as well, mainly in that first match against David Davis. I think he's playing better than he thinks he's playing as well. 55. And also, it's about remembering the objective, isn't it? He, he spoke about, yeah, trying to be competitive, but first and foremost was about getting a bit of competitive practice in 100. for the Seniors World Championship. And he's done the hard bit here, Glenn Durant. There's two things here that this isn't just down his local. This isn't around the corner. He's had to put a serious drive about five and a half hours in to be here to 54. play in this. And he's Paulie already spoke tonight about there was times he wanted to withdraw and not play. Game shot on the third leg. Paul Hogan. He's done the hardest bit by walking through the door. Fourth leg. It's Glenn to throw first. Yeah, Paul Hogan will not. Game on. Show any sympathy, he'll do his job. And there will be people watching, wondering why Glenn Durant is not able to produce what he used to be able to. But I think that's 100. a really, really pertinent point that Matthew Edgar's just made. And he's, well, he is the man in the arena, isn't he? Daring greatly. Glenn Durant. 100. And having gone through the internal battle. Honestly admitting that he thought about pulling out on more than one occasion. Turning up is 93. sometimes a win in itself. Absolutely. It's almost as if he's got a phobia now of the sport at the moment in terms of the playing side because we know how much he loves darts. And 140. Being able to be here is part number one of hopefully being able to enjoy the game once again because... That's ultimately what he's got to try and do. Find, once again, the enjoyment of being up there. Yeah, it's hard to find that enjoyment when you 
don't get any sort of feel or vibe for the for the throat. We've seen signs over 16. the last few months on various exhibition events and beating some quite prominent active players as well. You mentioned uh, an exhibition win against Scott Mitchell. I've actually had some inside information on that one. 43. The, the referee that night, that the exhibition was running behind a little bit. So instead of bulling up at the start of the match, the referee just gave the ball to Glenn. 60. I don't believe Scott Glenn, was very happy about 130. it. 130. Oh, can we get something to spark Duzzer? Can he bed a brilliant bullseye? 105. Just whistled past the wire. Poorly require 141. And if you notice, Paul Hogan in the background was nodding his head. And this is what I've been talking about all the time. 60. But the players playing against Glenn, Glenn Durham, they will always be fearing that you can snap back into that true Glenn Duran of yesteryear. Well, they still could. Double eight. Nine. Wasn't a bad dart. Poorly require 81. 15s for Hogan will be the route. And now 16s. And now that little red bit in the middle. 56. Couldn't quite find it. So Durant comes back. 16. He's still in this game. Game shot on the fourth He's definitely leg. in Glenn it now. Durant. Fifth leg. It's Paul to throw first. Game on. Sixty. One hundred and thirty-five. That grin has remained on Paul Hogan's face. It's like he is doing exactly what Matthew Edgar suggested and thinking that all of a 60. sudden, Glenn Durant's entered a time warp and is playing. Out of 2017 to 2020. Sixty. One hundred. Ninety-six. Sixty. So the first couple of fixtures was talking about Paul Hogan being sent to runaway leader here, average ninety-three and a half and a hundred and three and a half, but been unable to keep that pace. 59. Well, a big exchange coming up here. How low can Hogan go? 60. Not very low at all. Durant remains ahead here against the darts. Eighty-one. Poorly require 161. Big last start puts him in. Such a distance of a double with just a couple of singles, and he's going to get a shot. Hogan can't take the 161. 57. Glenn, you require 70. 70. Single to double. And he's missed the big number. Paul Hogan shaking 25. his head in the background as well. I think Paul Hogan's living every single dart here along with Glenn. And he missed another big number as well. 72. Paul Hogan can't hurt him because Durant hurt himself 45. here. He's lost two darts at double, really. One in this visit. But he does get two at double 16. And that Shot was his thing. Leg, and Durant. maybe it still is his thing. And maybe it's a thing that turned his night around. 
Sick leg. It's Glenn to throw first. Game Break on. a throw. Dozer has the darts to defeat Paul Hogan. A bit of bad luck, and he nods as if he was expecting it. Good last start from Glenn Durant. Good first two. Good first three from Paul Hogan. Well, Glenn Durant here has hit three treble twenties. One dart went on the floor. They're both on nines. When Glenn Durant came to the hockey, he mumbled, and you could see the mouth go, come on. For the first time, he's starting to think with that fire in the belly, starting to believe. 140. Yeah, he got in that battle, and you mentioned it earlier. That's when you stop thinking and you start fighting. 97. He is fighting. You can see the finishing line. That's a handy visit for Durant. Hogan unable to locate a treble. A leg in the balance. Hogan first two are finished, but Glenn Durant's going to be on a better one. Eighty-eight. Poorly require one hundred and twenty-four. Well, Glenn Durant is going to approach 56. the hockey for the first time tonight with an opportunity to win the match. Treble 19. Oh, it was in and out. Can he sink it in? Oh, that's unfortunate. It happened at the start and the end Poorly of the leg. 68. Start in the treble and out of it. And shot on a sick leg. Paul, Hogan Paul Hogan lands the cruel blow. Durant will Seven be thinking he should have a dart a double, to throw first. maybe even two to win Game that on. match. He still can, but he's going to have to do it the hard way. I don't think anything's feeling easy up 100. there at the moment, even for Paul Hogan. He is living every single dart of this match, and not just his own. He's playing along with Glenn here, but you can see now Hogan head down at the back of the stage, trying 58. to detach himself from the emotional roller coaster of this match. Sometimes you've got to do that. You can't get drawn into the story. You can't get drawn into a play-by-play -play to have to detach yourself and just focus on the throwing of the darts. And it's head down for Paul Hogan. Trying to be 16. very businesslike and get the job done here against Dozat. Chance to leave here today for Paul Hogan on six points, which would be... 60. Pretty much one foot in the door of Saturday night. Is it slipping away from Durant? Almost there, the big victory. 81. Bill Scraps needs Hogan to, to miss, basically, now. Durant hoping against hope, and he's not getting help from Hogan. 99. 41. Poorly require 164. Done himself an injury there, Glenn. That's how frustrated he is. We mentioned it, maybe still thinking about what could have happened in the last leg rather than being able to just keep it simple in this one, trying to force it. Ninety-eight. Paul, you require sixty-six. Not thinking there in the end, Glenn Durant. 48. Single 20 there to leave. 163. Could have been on a finish here. 
60. Paulie require 18. Ops to split, Paul Hogan. And the last shot, leg splits the, the pair of them. Paul Hogan. An embrace between Hogan and Durant. The pair have history. Then Durant winning their most famous battle. It was Hogan who had heartbreak then. He shakes his head as he disappears off the stage, but he's actually quite happy once Glenn's out of the way. He's celebrating Paul Hogan, but Durant loses for the third time tonight. He will get one more go. It's as close as he's come. And hopefully he takes the positives of that. He faces Conan Whitehead in the last match of the night. But before that, Chris Landman will meet David Davis, who's looking for a full house. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where before the break, Paul Hogan exacted revenge on that legendary game at the Lakeside back in 2017 with a 4-3 victory against Glenn Doe. It's the second game now that he has lost in a last leg decider. Right, into our penultimate game of the night. And David Davis has got the opportunity to complete the card. That's if he can get the better of Chris Lamb and the Dutchman. And in commentary for this one, Matthew Edgar is alongside Chris Murphy. Yeah, the penultimate game of the evening's action. Landman looking to deny David Davis that perfect night. And, well, it's been said before about Thursdays at the Super Series that in Group C, in the afternoon session, you, you can't win it. You can't go through on a Thursday, but you can go out. In first Group leg, B, it's, it's the opposite. You can't really go out, but you Game can on. go through effectively. And that's what would happen for David Dave. If he wins this match, he can start making plans for Saturday night. 140. Absolutely, especially when you've got a player at the moment in Glenn Durant who's bottom of the table on zero points. It does make it play a cut away and cut adrift. Hope that the rest beat each other and 85. you're through without needing to win again. Yeah, well the only the only way you could go out 
140. If he were to win one match tomorrow, assuming he beats Glenn Durant, if that's the, the narrative we're spinning, is that everybody else actually got to 10 points and you'd have a four-way tie between the attempted qualifiers. 85. Conan Whitehead, the opponent for Glenn Durant. He's not had a great night himself, Conan Whitehead, but the worst bit really for Glenn is that Whitehead won his last match. Landman is not going to let David Davis have this easily. We can see that with his opening three visits 49. in this game. All of them Richard scores 140. 81. Leave 81 after nine. Double 12. Gets in. On the first Landman. Leg. Chris Landman. Lands a 11 dart leg. And David Davis is going to have to put out the big guns Second to stop leg. the Dutchman it's if he carries on first. like this. Game on. It's one of those sort of awkward positions, isn't it, for David Davis? That if he does, he loses the match to Landman, and then Whitehead beats Durham. He's gone from being in a position where he would have matched it, would probably have put him through, to it really being open, two points between four players. Eighty-three. That's the story of Group B every week, isn't it? This smaller group with just five players in it, a lot more jeopardy, a lot more twists and turns, and you're never really fully out of it. Well, just to enhance that story even further about you never really being fully out of it, Glenn Durant could still finish on level points tonight 140. in a provisional qualifying spot. David Davis wins this, and then he manages to beat Conan Whitehead. It'll be Landman, Whitehead, and Durant all on two points. One of those players would definitely go through. 96. One hundred. Ninety four. Fifty eight. David, you require one hundred and sixteen. Lemon will get the chance to double his advantage if he can. Chris, you require 120. Or the Shanghai. 60. 20. 40. 80. Just over the top. David, you require 16. Shot on his second leg. David Snuck Davies. in, didn't it, somewhat? But he won't mind how it went in. He levels the match at one apiece. Third leg. Let's it's go Chris through the night, first. winning all of his matches. Game on. David Davis, and still only having a, a leg difference of plus four. 55. He's not made anything really easy for himself tonight, but dug deep at the right times, and he's... The big stuff when he needs it the most. 60. Forty-one. Looking to sweep from right to left. 140. Who will do? Just a reminder to viewers watching us on Sporty Stuff TV that the afternoon action tomorrow will be live and exclusive on the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. So do be sure to check that out and subscribe and be ready for 1 p.m. when Steve Brown will meet Colin Osborne. 59. Daryl Pilgrim currently in the box seat in Group C. Osborne in second place. Brown and everybody else just two points behind him. 100. And the next two places at finals night will be decided around six o'clock tomorrow afternoon. 
the end of that session. Robert Thornton already there. And then the action in this group returns at 10 p.m. Live, of course, back here on Sporty Stuff TV and, as always, on the YouTube channel. And the final three places will be filled. David, you require Saturday, 102. 7.30 on YouTube and the semi-finals and final at 10 p.m. on Sporty Stuff TV. David Davis is moving closer to being there. Double 16 would give him a real grip on this 70. game. Chris, you require 100. The grimace instead. Ninety-four. It was the one fourteen finish that David Davies used to beat Glenn Durant in his second fixture of the day. He's going to have it hit back against him. But again, a long way off with the first start. Game shot but rectifies the situation leg. just David like Davies. last time. Good positive signs again for David Davies, but that the most positive one is the breaker throw. Four flag, it's David to throw first. Game on. A yeah, very decent displays again tonight from David Davis, as we've become accustomed to when he's played at the Super Series. 97. Friend of Mark Webster plays in the same darts 81. team in Denby. A little zip and twist in the 85. release of the dart from David Davis. 108! Can't really analyse the Chris okay. Lamond throw. There's just not time, is there? He just gets rid of them before you can really do a close inspection. The one thing you can say with a Lamond throw is if he's going to have anything go wrong and miss, he's going to end up with the dart going low and standing up to a bit of attention just because of that little lift there you'll see on the elbow. 100. A, a lob, isn't it, from Landman. 180 in this leg. Down to 140, but you would still make Davis the favourite to win the leg at this point. Maybe not on this point. How about this 76. point? 76. Chris, you require an awkward one, isn't it? 140 versus 106. It's a coin toss. 100. David, you require 106. And is it ahead or fails? Decided to stay there. A double 13. Oh, Game that is some flag. shot David from David Davis. And you can see that it's affected Chris Landman, who shook his head. He put himself flag. It's Chris to throw first. perfectly placed on Game top. On. But the 106 landed by Davis is now one away from a perfect night. But Landman makes a perfect start. Very good at controlling the pace of the game as well here, David Davis. Sucking the pace out of the game, but not sucking the quality out of the game. They're both on the nine. 125. Well, calm down. One man's miss now. Forty-three. You're the other one's mess. One hundred. I'm going to start this match with an 11 dart. We might get another 95. one here. Chris, you require 96. 106.57 and he's 3-1 down. 60. He will return, but David Davis will do what David Davis does. Try and say that five times quickly. 99. With five pressure. Chris, you require 36. 
next door neighbour. Game shot of the fifth player, Chris Lambert. Switch and adjust the score to 3 2. Davis now has the darts to win it. Sick leg. It's David to throw first. Game on. Sixty one hundred. One hundred. David Davis is also the, the name of a, a politician, a former government minister. Just seen the news that Luke Humphreys will be paying a visit to Downing Street tomorrow. He's going to meet the Prime Minister. One hundred and forty. World champion Luke Humphreys off to number ten. One hundred and forty. One hundred and twenty-three. Well, it could be win number four for David Davis. And it would be a flawless night. David Seventy-eight requires. for both players, but Davis gets the first go, and it would be his best win of the evening. The first three were four-three, twenty, and tops for a four-two. Oh, he's missed a big number. What a time for that to happen! It's the same equation now for Chris, Chris Landman. Requires 78. Except this would be a break of throw. Reinstall himself as favourite to win this match. Sixty. Well, he hasn't managed to find it. David, you why he was shaking his 14. head after the first dart there. He hit the treble he wanted. Looked away at the scoreboard. Started shaking his head. I mean, it wasn't exactly a positive approach, was it? Twenty. But he will get another go. David Chris Davis lets it slip. 12. If he's going to win all of his games tonight, he might have to win them all in last leg deciders. Double three. No. Nine. Davis can get it done here. David, you require 20. We just said about going to number 10. Double 10. Game shot. It's in double 10. And, the match. and it's David double Davies. delight for David Davis. Who defeats Chris Landman 4 2 and in doing so completes a perfect night in Group B at the Modus Super Series. Uh, an average of 97.85 for Chris Landman, but it's Davis with the 88 that wins the match and goes through the card. Then there's one more match to come tonight. It features Glenn Durant looking for his first win. He faces Conan Whitehead, and if Glenn wins that match, He'll be tied with Landman and Whitehead and in with a real chance of qualifying come tomorrow. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series. We're joined alongside the man who's had the perfect night in Group B, David Davis. Many congratulations, but boy, did you have to work for it, though. Yes, I did. And do you know what? Looking at the looking at the group before I come here, I knew it was going to be tough. Those guys' CVs write themselves, and I'm just a little old Dave from Denby, just just nipping in and out. So, no, I'm happy with my performances today, and no, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. You say you're a little Dave from Denby, but you've built a bit of a reputation for yourself though, over the last year or so. Well, I'd like to think so. Um, Top of the Welsh ADC. Um, yeah, I did lose my belt to Chris, but no, I've, I've entered a few competitions and every time I've come here, I feel like I'm growing every time and I just want to progress on finals night now, but I need to get there first tomorrow, not taking anything for granted. Right, so let's talk about tonight in general. One thing that was kind of key for you was those clutch finishes, those ton plus out shots or those little pop pop combinations at key times, including, of course, that 114 against Glenn. Yeah, I was falling low um, the treble 20, which, which isn't like me at all. And then, obviously, the finishers take me out, um, help me out. So that's what I've been practicing this week. Um, you know the, fam the, the famous saying, scoring for show and doubles for those. So, no, it's definitely paid off. Glenn, Glenn had me on the ropes there. I needed that top score in because I think he was on 88. And, yeah, I, th I, think, Glenn, I think Glenn was going to check that out. Do you feel like your experience, having been here a few times now, came into play at certain points of tonight? Most definitely. Every time I come here, um, I feel like I learned something different about the game. I learned something about myself and... Timing is a massive, massive factor, and I, I, I've shown that today. We've seen you here for a year now at the series. We've seen you make it through to Saturday night. Each appearance you're here, does the expectations continue to grow? I want to win every game, and before even entering the building, I think I'm going to win the whole thing. I wouldn't leave my house if I didn't think I, I, I could win. So, um, again, seeing the field is like is a tough ask, but four out of four today, and, yeah, I'm looking forward to it tomorrow. As I say, into tomorrow night, and as you said earlier on, can't take anything for granted, just one game at a time? I've been here before with zero points on the Friday. Um, I've not been in this situation four, four from four. I've been here with two points going into Friday and still made it through. So I know how things can twist and change. And so I'm not taking anything for granted, but I am looking forward to it tomorrow. Well, David, many congratulations on tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. One more game to go for us this evening. It's going to see Glenn Durrant in action as he takes on Conan Whitehead. And watching this one, Dan in country, Matthew Redker and Chris Murphy. Yeah, nice to hear from David Davis there. And he's had a nice night. He's top of the table, but all the interest now is at the bottom. Chris Landman, having lost that last match to Davis, has only managed to earn two points tonight. Conan Whitehead so far has only got two. Glenn Durant hasn't got any. But if he wins this match, well, it's mission accomplished. He's competitive. He would be tied for third place and three go through. The beauty of Group B. Never really out of it after first a night, leg, but it's he Glenn to throw first. would love Game to get on. a win to end his evening and enhance his chances of seeing Saturday at the Super Series. Taking on the guy he always beats as well. 8-0, the head-to-head -head record between the two. And Durant wasn't quite as sure. He could only recall one 55. game, but Conan Whitehead was reeling them off. Paul Hogan got his revenge on Dozza. Conan gets one hundred. This is again where Glenn Durant, when he spoke about being in hiding and finding it hard to come out and play the darts, he's, he's almost all that work that he's done over the years, the scalps that he's taken and those wins 43. that he's had. He's almost coming out and letting people get that victory over his name, despite the fact it is clearly not the same Glenn Durant. I've seen it, and you will have well. You will as, as well when you 52. commentated or just watched the, the World Seniors when people have played Phil Taylor. There have been the odd few that have played Phil Taylor as if he was Phil Taylor from 10, 15, 20 years ago. And he was there for the taking, but they haven't taken the chance because in 85. their mind, the man behind them is bound to hit everything when he comes back to the hockey. My mind goes back to a game which really stood out for me. So I'm going to see you next week, Colin 46. McGarry. A lot of people expected McGarry to have beat Phil Taylor that night on the form that we saw from McGarry in the seniors match play, but said the Phil Taylor aura was just too much room to crack. 59. I think it's one of the reasons why people have been so refreshed by what they saw at the Ali Pally. You've got a young 16 year old, no fear, beating world champions, 58. beating Rob Cross, beating Raymond Van Barneveld. Getting those huge scalps. And Luke Humphreys has been a similar kind of character himself, in a way. 
Well, the good news is that isn't just going to be a story for Ali Pali. That's going to be a story for 17 weeks now included in the EDC Premier League, a title that Glenn Durant has hoisted up into the air at the MK Arena during the COVID times. Yeah, something that can't be taken away. 60. Watch your names on the Roll of Honour. It stays there. One hundred and forty. Durant gets himself down to a good position in the opening leg. Sixty. Glenn, you require Golden sixty. Golden scores sixty. Does a want sixty? And that's not too much of a problem. He blocks a small portion of the bed, but he might be thinking about using it. 40. It does collide with that dart. Maybe it did cause a little bit of a distraction, but you'll half expect to be back. And he will be back. 85. See him in the background there. Seems so desperate, Glenn determined 20. to get this done, Glenn Durant. Just go up and throw. Don't overthink it. Don't overdo it. Just chuck it in. Ten. We'll often be stood there thinking, don't 40. overthink, which is ultimately thinking. I know, it's ever so strange. Thirty-five. Glenn, you require well, It will be a strange ten. feeling for Glenn Dirt to be missing so many opportunities. It's been going three for double one plenty of times. It hasn't been successful for Glenn Durant tonight. Eight. Wasn't a bad dart, was it? But Could it'll feel like a bad five. dart because it missed. Game and it's a leg that got leg. away. There have been Turn a few of those ahead. tonight for Glenn Durant. A head scratcher. And Conan Whitehead has Second no idea how he Conan won it. You can see that from his reaction. Game on. One hundred and forty. Forty-five. Maybe hard going at 96. the moment for Dozza, but this is his last fixture of the day, so it is a torrid end. The end is in sight, and then he can go get tucked into one of his favourite Palmos. You know, there's two thousand six hundred calories in a Palmo. Really? I have to try one of those. With the side of another palmo, I'm guessing. 133. However many calories there are in it. I'm having it with chips. And the Diet Coke? Absolutely. I'll have two of those. Well, Conan Whitehead might want two balls here. It doesn't have to go flashy. Conan, require 132. Is he going flashy? Is he going flashy? Whatever he was going for, he missed it by a mile. 78. Thirty-three. What's interesting about 54. this tonight would for Glenn Durant as Whitehead looks to mop up the fifty-four. Well, that's Double 14 left. 26. And what I think probably made it even more difficult for Glenn is that whenever he's played before and not played well, that's it. It's one match. He's out of the tournament. But he's had to keep coming back on the stage. That's why it's very important that you always find the positive and try and build on that positive. 45. Even if it's just one dart out of the 100 darts you've thrown, find something to 
take into the next game. 14. Well, it could still go wrong here for Whitehead. It went wrong for Durant in the previous leg. Could it go wrong for Whitehead in this one? No one wants to see darts matches 16. and darts legs won like Don't that going wrong 14. for one player. They want it to go right for a player, as right as possible. But this could get tricky. This is very tricky. No score. Glenn, you require 164. Fifty-eight. Conan, you require 14. A chance for Whitehead on the double seven. It's tricky, you could see. The angle of the second no dart, score. and again, just clattering into Glenn, the equipment. Glenn, you require 106. 18. Not to be. Whitehead still... On that awkward double seven, if he chooses to 65. persevere, he could split. He's had a couple Conan, of bad memories of this double. He remains on it. He's thinking here. Do I split? Or do I hit? Well, he's done exactly the same thing as he's done the last couple of times. And he's barricaded himself out. Oh, he's what a dart that is. Leg. Straight Conan between Whitehead. the posts. What a shot from Conan Whitehead. Perseverance Third paid off in the end, 2-0. This game is the off. worst thing that could happen as well in a game like this for Glenn. What ideally he would have wanted is that Conan Whitehead would have blown him away for the first couple of legs, and he could actually have something to fight against. 58. At the moment, he's just presented with opportunities, and right now, that doesn't stoke the fire. It'd be one of those games that if Whitehead then starts to hit. 60. Expect that. Glenn would go with him, but 23 missed darts at double between the pair in the opening couple of legs. And it feels a little 96. bit like maybe the towel is being thrown and the white flag might be about to be raised here for Glenn Durant on his Thursday action. We will see him again tomorrow. 108! Uh, he's such a, a great guy, Glenn Durant. I, I kind of only wish he had a friend like Glenn Durant. You mentioned earlier words of positivity and 125. encouragement for everybody else, but beats himself up chronically. Fifty-seven. Without a doubt, he's the sort of guy that if. That was me on the stage right now, having the sort of experience that he's having. The first person you want to speak to is Glenn, because you know he'd pick you back up again. And 180! You're thinking about the positive and the next step, but that's a good step forward for Glenn Durant. Conan White is literally throwing his entire body into some of these darts. This one might not be over. Glenn, you're 180 42. for Glenn Durant. He's had a couple of 14 darters tonight. Looking for another. Oh, he had to check the score in between. Just a little sign of not feeling too comfortable. He'll feel Get better now. The third leg, Glenn Durant. He's home again. Double 16 found. Durant back in the match. Cuts the gap to Fourth a single leg. leg. It's Conan to throw first. Just looking a bit more Game on. purposeful. No shaking of the head. No rolling of the eyes, just business-like all of a sudden from Glenn Durant. And maybe it's Conan Whitehead now who is actually suffering what, Matthew, you mentioned earlier. A feeling of, oh no, he's, he's back. This is the Glenn that I used to lose to all the time. 45. Ninety-seven. Nervy, edgy affair. In that, Glenn Durant would, in his heyday, really thrive upon. He was one of the best players I've seen under pressure. Fifty-eight. Well, that's what he was famed for, wasn't it? You've got to dart a double sixteen. Stay in a match to win a match. You'll hit it. 
140. Is it to stay in this match? You feel it's a big match as well. Just the way it's gone for Glenn, you would think that a four-point gap... Just can't let go of the dart there. Yeah, you would think that a four-point gap for Glenn Durant going into tomorrow would be too big to bridge. 60. But if he wins this game, he'd be level for third place. Hard game for Whitehead here as well. He's got so much respect for Glenn Durant as a dart player. 96. He mentioned from the very second that he walked through the doors here today. The record, the fear and the respect that he has for this man. When you see him up there struggling. Shaking his head after that second dart thinking, why now? When Conan's Conan, in the position. So many dart players must go through that. The legs as good as gone and then suddenly you start finding what you're going for. But just think back to that leg where White had kept missing darts at double seven. And ultimately, he won it. 50. But it took him a while. It took him nine darts to hit that double seven. So Glenn might not be out of this leg yet. And he wants to remind his opponent of that. 85. Conan, you require 60. One miss, followed by 50. another. Glenn, you require 130. An awkward misses as well, because it's put him into double five, where I don't know anyone who's ever said my favourite double is double five. Different part of the ball, but causes the 53. same problem as that double seven earlier Glenn, on. Glenn, you require 10. Although if he does go above it, he's not going to block it. Certainly went with that dart. And he yeah, finds it with that flag. one. Conan and Whitehead. you can see the disappointment from Glenn Durant. Conan Whitehead on the brink of his first Fifth win against the three-time world champion. Game on. Glenn Durant looked like a robot at the back of the stage. Didn't he? Someone just turned off. Looked like he was shutting down at the back of the stage. I reckon if you gave him the choice and said, Glenn, do you want to concede this leg 98. now? You can go home. I reckon he'd be happy with that. He'd say, yep, my night's done. I'll see you later. 123. 100. They point out earlier in the evening that Conan White had touched felt his shoulder a couple of times. I've just had it confirmed that he is struggling with an injury. 140. Not playing with the freedom he would like. 58. Glenn Durant won't be feeling much freedom. One hundred and forty. Not a disastrous night for Durant. Yes, in terms of wins and points, it might feel like that. But just hark back 100. to the fact that the man who won 98. all of his games, Glenn Durant took to a last leg decider. That was David Davis. 58. Four Glenn, from four. It'll be four defeats from four for Glenn Durant if he doesn't take this out. And he's not going to, so Whitehead will come back for tops. 57. Conan, you require 40. To take a 4-1 win, a first ever win against Glenn Durant. It's not the Glenn Durant he used to play. Game shot. Brother himself is aware Conan of that. Whitehead. It's a 4-1 success for Conan Whitehead who takes a step himself towards Saturday, somewhere he feels very comfortable at the Super Series. Struggling through the pain barrier tonight, Whitehead, but he's put himself on four points in this group and in a provisional qualifying spot. Conan Whitehead defeating Glenn Durant 4-1. Neither player 
really producing good stuff late in the evening here at the Super Series. He got a couple of victories, Whitehead. Durant on debut could not find enough to win despite some defiant displays throughout the night. Chris Landman picking up one win, Paul Hogan picking up three, and David Davis winning four from four in this group. He's top of the table and talking tonight's action are Matthew Edgar and Henry Deacon. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris Conan. Whitehead 4-1 victor in the last game of the evening session. For Conan, he'll feel like probably job done. That wasn't at his best at times. And as you say, he was having some issues with the shoulder. But to get a couple of victories on the board, he'll feel he's definitely in this group. Yeah, that's all it is. Get the points. Give yourself an opportunity tomorrow. No one's really out of this ever at any point in a Group B. We've seen players before zero points still be able to turn it around and get themselves into position. So no one's ever really out of a Group B, but you want to get a couple of points on the board, give yourself that real opportunity. That's what Whitehead's done here. Well, let's have a look and see what's happened then this evening. These are the results on the 10 games that we have watched tonight. And it was a perfect night as far as David Davis was concerned. He won all four games here at the Super Series this evening. And he's the type of player that we've seen here a couple of times. Well, we've seen more than a few times now. He's becoming an ever-present here in this competition. And he's the type of player that you should underestimate very, very lightly because it, you know the quality that he's got now. He's proven it every single time he comes here. Today more than ever. Today was a real good standout performance. It was a real good sort of step forward in the Super Series journey of David Davies. The timing, the quality, the darts under pressure, all top notch tonight from David Davies. And I've really enjoyed watching his story develop. The 114, that was huge, wasn't it? It really was. It was a big moment in terms of the story of the night. When those things come early in the night, it can really set the tone and change in terms of the whole pattern of play for the entire evening. And that really did set him up at the start. Meanwhile, for Paul Hogan, what would be your assessment of his evening? I think my assessment will probably be the same that his was, which you can easily clearly see from the body language, the head shaking, the erraticness of the night. But with flashes of brilliance and again, enough done to give himself real hope that he can get through to another Saturday night. And he just seems to always have these stories of Saturday night, the same as Robert Thornton. And so often they seem to be in the same week. And will it be Paul Hogan's turn to finally win on this stage? Well, we will find out. So, Davis and Hogan, the two standout performers on night one. This is the table as a whole. Conan White had also picked up a couple of wins from the evening. Chris Lamman picking up a solitary victory. Glenn Doe at bottom of the year. But I suppose the big surprise really is Chris Lamman because he was the bookmaker's favourite for the week going into this group, but was second favourite to win the group, which is a bit of an odd complexity. But we probably expected more from him tonight, didn't we? Well, Pilgrim was the favourite to win the week. Pilgrim was the favourite to win the group in Group A. It didn't happen. That's the story of this week so far. The bookies' favourites haven't quite materialised so far. And again, not the case here for Chris Landman. He's very good at that one steady pace, but he's in a group here of people that we talked about those wavering lines of performance. And he's just run into people when they've been hitting their peaks. Well, Matt, thank you for your company as ever. See you sharpish tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Another double session of darts. I've enjoyed every single bit of the last 13 hours of you, Matt. Right, we shall see you tomorrow from one o'clock here on the Super Series YouTube channel for the culmination of Group C. As far as Group B is concerned, well, it's a case of double D. David Davis with the W's.